this is a workers' workshop. Uh, the Communist Party of Swaziland uh, is following up on its own resolutions to strengthen the trade union movement and broadly to strengthen the working class struggle in Swaziland for a free and democratic Swaziland towards socialism. So this is part of our own revolution. We are with the workers through and through, and by the working class, we also include the people who were fighting uh, in the past week and who are continuing the fight against, against uh, police violence in Swaziland, which is nothing but the continuation of the tactics used by the regime to suppress the masses of our country. And of course, we, the, the, the aim of or the theme on this one is about workers' control. We're looking at democratic control of trade unions that is rooted in the masses themselves, that is the, the workers having control on their own unions and the results of their programs being a result of democratic discussion and involvement of workers. So that is the crux of the matter. But Comrade GS will come in and broaden it much more on the theme and the history, where we're coming from with the, this theme and where we are going to. And of course, later, Comrade Quintin, who has vast knowledge on trade unionism, is going to be our keynote speaker. He's going to give us all the knowledge that he has had in the trade union movement, the struggles, the highs and the lows. And give us a picture on what the situation is now and how it is look, looking up moving forward. We, of course, will be interested in knowing a lot about uh, how to Koswa is at this point and uh, as well as its projections, the unions that form it as well, that affiliate uh, under to Koswa and their strength. So it could be a very deep discussion, but it's going to help other, especially workers on the shop floor in order to organize and also all help the Communist Party of Southern to build and to work with the trade union movement. Comrade GS, uh, the General Secretary of the Communist Party of Swaziland, Comrade Kenneth Gunene, uh, I'm going to call him now to take over this session and uh, make his uh, presentation on the matter. Thank you, Comrade Fasleta. Thanks, Comrade Pius. Mm. Greetings to all of you, Comrades. Uh, as the subject has been stated, but let me, one other very difficult situation will be to, I, I say some few things in, the, in our Congress about a uh, worker, but the other side I would raise is that I've never worked in my life I've never been employed in my life. Let me say it correctly because I work, but I've never been employed. I only worked in a farm in Malkins in 1995. And I was doing two jobs. I was working the farm, but I was also a domestic worker partner in Zimangadze in Mbabane in the same year. 96 to 95, 96. So that's where I, 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 I can attest about work and my experiences in the work. And then thereafter on trade union, it was when I was a integrated a, to assist in, yeah, and to cause, well, no, not to cause, it was in the South, but by then it was NACS, where I spent about one and a half years 
working there. So that is my, my little experience in, in working. Uh, but the subject on workers, it's everyone's subject. What I said in the Congress was that if you are un unemployed and then you reach a stage where you are old and you, are, you have to be a pensioner, you will end up saying a pension is a gift from a government to anyone who is aging. When it is what a worker has served, he collects my savings, he must spend in my pension, and then for workers it becomes their pension fund that is reserved and is used by governments to invest and then raise more from that money, and then so that it becomes a bulk package of everyone who's old, and then get a pension. So we will find another two more workers who spend up a month so that would demand the man to use it if you're unemployed. So that's the, the, the other biggest problem about being alienated. So I'm part of, we are part of, I've been part and parcel of the alienated league. Uh, so the subject of workers is quite critical to me on those aspects. But complex is about the CPS, a part of political form of workers. But we discussed the subject of workers of nothing else other than trade unions. Since the organization of factories, the early stages of capitalism, it was inevitable to have workers organized into unions. It becomes an automatic process because there was a need to respond to the condition of employment, to the new condition of life that the factory arrangement had created. And the other requirements of administration and other responsibility of that kind of state, you know, the capital space, so to say. But when you introduce and associate the issue of trade unions, the first element there is about strike. There is no purpose of a trade union other than to think about a strike. I'm, I'm, I'm bringing that for further engagement and discussion to Congress because that is the, the main attitude. If you are a leader of a trade union and in your own involvement on trade union life, the issue of strike doesn't exist. You do not relate anything about trade unions. There is, I would say you are actually nowhere in relation to trade unions. You are in another, oh, I'm saying another, theater of life and organization, not, not a trade union. I, I'm not buying in other issues who do they say types of unions, but I'm saying unions, trade unions, the association, the organizations of workers to fulfill certain objectives that relate to their interests as a collective. So if the issue of a strike is removed from a, any leader, or from any thinking about trade unions, there will be no purpose to discuss about trade union worker control and uh, democracy in trade unions. The reason the subject comes in it is because it is becomes relevant or important to say how do you make workers participate in this strike action? because only a union can enter into a strike and only a strike can make workers to bargain better. So it's a weapon, the strike becomes a weapon of workers to leverage their interests and their, or improve their conditions in the workplace. So the aim is to fulfill the objectives of a, the trade unions in the What remains a very important element in trade union and trade unions is a problematic position, comrade, a, a, a facilitator and comrades, the way I place it. But let me go back then to how we relate with this subject as a, as a CPS and why we want to, to go into it into deeper details. 
uh, my assertion of being trade union and strike remains, but then let me come back to this uh, very important aspect of the discussion. The CPS participation in the trade unions in Switzerland, organizing them through our commission. And then we have further said in our Congress that the party and the grassroots organization of workers. What we need to clarify better here is that uh, the CPS establishes itself in the shop floors, in the workplaces. There is no CPS structure in a trade union. There's, there's a CPS structure, there should be a CPS structure in the workplace. So a CPS cell that is organized in the shop floor, in the workplace, whose mandate and task is to organize workers into unions. Not parallel unions, but unions, into unions in the that same workplace. So the structure of the party there is to organize workers into unions. And we have to run activities through organizations of the Communist Party, which study cells and also networks and cells that the party will organize in every workplace. So not a party structure in a union. So there's no party cell in a trade union. It only exists in the shop floor, in the workplace. Once the workplace environment is not there, the CPS structure doesn't actually exist in any way. Then, but also in a trade union, you cannot have say. But there are CPS members in the trade union, in right across the rank and file of the trade unions structures, whose role and responsibility is to respond to the program and the objective of the CPS in building and strengthening trade unions. Then to enter into the subject of uh, the trade unions and then the Communist Party revolution will be attended through in the next sessions and series of sessions that we we'll attend, which seeks to explain in details that the Communist Party is a permanent factor, is a permanent participant in the trade union life. And with no any other conditions of ever fear of being there unnecessary or so on, but we are there, but in what way are we there? I think that is the purpose of today's clarity that I think we need to put place in. So here we want to equip our Congress to understand better how best do CPS members participate and play their role and they relate within the trade union movement and also fulfilling the party work and objectives as stated. In this subject complex on the workers, the workers control is the principle of a democracy. As you look at the, the whole thing is about uh, the CPS says the, the trade union is a school for democracy. That part which says there is democracy to be achieved and socialism is a form of democracy. It's a, it's a, it's a working class democracy. So the democratic element, the democratic concept of phenomenon exists permanently in the whole life of the revolution. But when we say the state union is a school, what really are we trying to say and what are we really trying to explain? And then if it is a school, where is democracy? And how is it exercised? Truly democracy, when it is exercised, it is in the broader society. So the trade union becomes a school. So you learn in a trade union, you learn democratic processes and procedures. When I was working in, in snacks, now, uh, the first condition of uh, the task was to make the trade union a democratic organization. That was the outcry 
the trainer by then for some years as on ages has been operating without democratic procedures from federation level that's why there were elements of splits two federations in existence because there was no interest over the democratic process lifestyle in the training and it could be explained in many areas of the history of the trade union. It is part of the curriculum that the CBS must do, the history of the trade union movement. And then the entry point was, if it doesn't exist, but it must exist somewhere because it must exist in trade unions. So the first condition was make Napsau a democratic union, which was next thing. So we had to explain what is the democracy? There were different political orientation among the trade unions. As I would say, in the Saudi leadership, the president was a member of NNC, the treasurer was a member of NNC, the secretary general was a member of uh, Prudemo, I was a member of Swayoko. There were others who were unaffiliated, there were conservatives along the whole array of Jews. But the entry point was so simple because it says this is an institution for democrats. So we need to practice democrats along that line. So in such a way that there was no conflict among the in the leadership level and until it reached up to the bottom, we only had few elements where undercover police started up to come up and then try to define and level others in the another way, but among the whole range, but they, they couldn't sustain it because our understanding, our approach was that we are, we are entering in a two school, you must learn, and you must be convinced that this is an institution about democracy as such. So the point I'm bringing was, is, is that in that arrangement, everything had to be explained, including my presence. I was the only employee. But who explained it? It was only not someone from outside, but also by the workers themselves. What was my role there? And there can be no way that my role there cannot be in conflict or in contest by other forces. But who will explain it? It was only the workers. And they can explain based on what they have seen, what they have observed, and what they experience. So democracy is an experience. It's a lifestyle, but it's an experience. It's not a, 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 a concept. It's a, a practical activity that one must go through. So in that sense, it was, we need to develop the policies. We need to arrange. That's why the process of NAPSAW build up started to say, then let us wake up. So there were varieties of forces. Others were feeling they were a bit more educated and the rest, the majority were not educated. Some couldn't understand her very well how to work with those kind of uh, differences. Some felt, no, let not, not be up. So the major people who were second like, public works, we had about 30 years as temporal workers, and so on. So other members who were a bit more educated felt they are not, they can't help the union. So I'm, I'm trying to say the element of democracy, but once we start to alienate those forces, you are no longer talking about a trade union because your aim was not to think along trade union and strike action. Strikes because you organize for the purposes of waging a strike, which is a weapon of banning. Strikes for labor bargaining, for, for, for fulfillment of labor demands. The, the, it becomes a dust weapon that makes, whether it's, it's, it's about a, 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 working conditions, whether it is about wages. The reason for the union to organize, it has to win some of its battles using that bargain instrument, which is like action. So you think along those lines, then you want to learn the element of democracy. You have to think about those kind of things. If there's no guide towards democracy, you will not have that logic of that kind of thing. So the involvement of this, of everyone, on that line was basically a democratic practice. Usengenanja, you could see Wonkelum Sebendilo Lakunapsa, Abe, 
uyinyuman abe ne understanding uzi kwen ipen dega ne functional gani uyinyuman. As such, I end 1.5. In my first year, I end 2000 red on my on my second year. That was 2000 and, and four and five. The reason was that some of our workers are not educated enough. Umaseba bona kuperu mnyaga skipi financial report kutiwa ima lenga ga iyegwe a sum total of the population of the monthly income will earn. It will be equivalent to to the uneducated workers that le mali nanti ziwa nungfana mali eti shobele nungfana. They want to see every figure and they must study in that component. It was based on our understanding that this is how we should be working up and how it must work. If I was not a volunteer, it would either didn't have any papers, I would have said, no, that's not a job. But because I entered there with the people. So we, we moved and we, we escalated, we organized, everything was there. We created policies. When you speak about the workers' control, everything was about the work. You would think your ideas could be ideas, but they are meaningless if they have not been translated into some sense within the majority of the workers. And that's why there was a need and a demand to run political education whilst we are also structuring and aligning. I think we did something that unions have never done. We also even established quickly a, a women's league. There was a women's league in the South for quick development. That's why it could easily move in. When I came in in the first, when I entered there, the intake from, from collection was 4.5,000 which was mainly collected from subscriptions from workers, because there were few workers who were in the system. But there were a lot of problems that the workers had. Individual, per sector, and in, completely to nothing. To a level that we even discovered that some workers were garnished, they were not earning any money. Because anyone who wants to pull the money up. The, the, the bosses also, when I unleash a good, you are absent from work. But we had to go to the Gangalim 17. If I come to the workplace, Mulem Kulen, I would have an idea in full. So they will never, they will dress as him 79, I am 70. So it was a dilemma, a dynamic of a, of a situation. Not so important for me, but it's necessary. But we, we, the aim was how do we make all of them to come into the surface and then be there? So in no time when we started to say, I'm trying to bring that element to say that the party element must also be serving. We wanted to serve, them. we wanted to know the interest, the condition of the work and serve them. In the process of serving them, the union accumulated members and accumulated capacity. But the issue was, how do they make the members related to the subscription, the union, their conditions, and then the struggles they are involved in? Those issues cannot be explained without democratic processes, without and, 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 and consistent involvement of workers. So if then they had no space to participate, if they had no room to discuss, I will recall, they will just have to have mass meetings. There was no position, the, 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 the national executive had no explanation of whatsoever other than to deal with mainly the administrative responsibilities because council and mass meetings that was influencing decisions. So that's why in, in, in the incident like at that time, it was not difficult to go into strike or into a protest action or whatever petition. Because once an issue I raised, once things are, are, are difficult, it was easier to call a mass meeting. Using the union resources that they've accumulated, workers were paid, None of the office bearers was full time. So I was the only person who was getting money. The rest were getting money, which was a, so like a, to say it was what a claim based on your transport fee and naturally based on what the bus pays, which was a minimum to deliver the bus. Then there was the, the, the element of the lunch. It was only like that. Yes, other members were not so happy, they felt they are being used, but that was the question of saving. But when explained to the workers, they realized that things were 
running and working to their own favor because the only way to convince for any decision was to influence first the general council. We even had a policy that any expenditure of more than 10,000 should go via general council. So including a, 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 any any even if the democratic procedure, any there, there was no lapse of any financial discrepancy because of democracy. There was trust from every member. As it was, as it were the mandate. But it, it led into an accumulation of things. So it's an example I'm raising on my experience in a work in, in a trade union, but trying to under, uh, understand to the critical subject. Workers control of way of unions, democracy and democratic practices in the operation of the trade union at all aspects, at all levels. Decisions are taken. As branches, as workplaces. National public waste was attending. There were known as sites where there must be recruitment where you need to be involved and try to organize it. So a workplace, a work environment becomes that kind of a fit environment. So you will not necessarily talk about the union without its, the work sites, without the lives in the work sites. We would even go to have meetings. Others they didn't have even the space to meet the very often among talking or seven. So we make sure that half or six must be in the site so that we can have a briefing before they open, so that a decision is taken there and there. That a boss nam change as we have resolved that we really want to have our union to come and meet with us and discuss with us. So if we just resolve it as workers, so they, they create a kind of condition of power. So that, that practice of democracy will say those who are leading are accountable. And they are not only accountable among themselves, they will be accountable to the organization. You will have these conferences. Constitutionalism, I think now in Nepal, that is the basic bigger challenge that is being faced now. So when unions develop, remember, we prepare draft documents, we went to a policy conference to discuss the documents, and then the documents were discussed even in commissions, including a gender policy, finance policy, strategic policies to make every worker who was in the training to understand how, how are we going to do our things. Then in that course of the process, where all the workers were involved, had to understand why women should be involved and what their role in the union. They understood why we should recruit the young workers to be part and parcel of the trade union. They had to know and understand why a, 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 any member or representative of the union must be accountable. We need to have all these uh, conferences. We need to have all the political education programs because we said it is manipulative if you can explain to people without making them to tell you what they really want to see things happen. So without the program education program that was advanced throughout all the branches, we wanted to come up with a sense of democracy, democratic practices are also related to the consciousness of those who are involved. People must discuss things with full knowledge of what exactly are they doing and what are the aims and processes so that they could be in a position to review and revisit their past decisions. So decisions and executions of decisions became part and parcel of the practice. It helped the growth of the union. It supported the confidence of the workers. It made bargaining to be easier. In the period of that kind of a, 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 a life, there was an achievement by the fire branch which has been so abused on working hours and working conditions that were so unfavorable. And they needed compensation for that. Through strikes and protests, they were able to win. 
because not only because the other branches didn't understand, the whole union participated, placed resources and other strength towards making the fire branch to operate, to achieve that mileage. So it becomes a very strong mileage for them. But all of them, all the workers with them were involved because we understood that we have created the space for democratic life so that no one knew what was the, the strike for whosoever, what was the, the, the condition of, of the working condition of each and every one of us, with the, of each one of the workers in that category. So it, it just seriously had. So it's not a compromise compromise because that's what CPS members are expected to do, or they can only achieve a useful contribution in the trade union movement. If only themselves are oriented in a democratic practice, if only themselves they understand that uh, the trade union is a school for democracy. Support of workers. Sometimes they extend to solidarity to outside influences. So along the, 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 the rank and file, along the trade union lives, along the work, the workers themselves, it must be summarized. Uh, you will quote Congress, you will also understand Congress that even in the Industrial Relations Act now in Sweden and elsewhere now in the world, for a strike to be effected. There is a need for balloting. Imagine in the period of your balloting, you don't reach a threshold because you didn't you ignore the democratic processes. Then that's why you have unions that have never entered into a strike. But they are known and they are sometimes making activity, but they cannot pull workers across the trade, across the sector into common action into a strike. Some of the activities can be resolved outside strike, but you can see that this union still claim they exist, and probably they exist for one way or another, but at what level do they exist if there is a strike? And if there is no element and purpose of a strike, we will not recognize the importance of a democratic and deeper democratic process, which means how many are we in the workplace? How many are unionized? Why are they not unionized? And then how do we make them to understand the trade? And then how, what are the conditions they are living in? Then you start up to work. And in the course of the strike action, you will then plan along the people of those who are of, among those workers who are not involved in the strike. Such kind of decisions cannot take place if you have never, if you say these are part of our workers who are not part and parcel of the strike, or who are not part and parcel of the strike. But you must ban them from undermining the strike when we have resolved on the strike. Those strike makers, Emakunba, Lava, Lava, Shalaba, Bakate, Kusanabe, Bona, Afnakhtala, who benefited from the trade, from the work, from the effort of the others. We will not resolve that unless or yet unless you have entered into the deeper process of democracy. So workers must know, in summary, workers must know how. Must be, must be involved in the decision, in every decision of the union. Every decision of the union must incorporate, must come from the dictates of the masters, from the dictates of the rank and file in the trade. If there is any better or clever thinking, any leader which is expected to do a provision must have, it is important that uh, those ideas must be Processly or, or systematically introduced for preparation, for engagement, and discussion from the grassroots. Because at the end, what form the union? It is that kind of strength of knowing each other, of the comradeship, you know, of the common feeling, of the common suffering, and then the common cause of action. 
So in the in, in, in the in the end of everything, it makes it very simply for the unions to remain strong, for the unions to fulfill even non-economic demands that are set forward for any society. They could be able to participate in democracy beyond the, 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 the union themselves. So when they learn about accountability, that we have to be accountable. Uh, I will say, comrades, when the, what was a clear demand was that a financial report must uh, first win internal auditing before it can go to an external auditor. And then it was then expected to be adopted or acceptable when it has been audited. And the condition for auditing, one of it was that there must be any transaction must be supported by minutes influencing that decision and the specific amount to be spent. And the auditing process will then explain the procedure of a procurement or usage of that kind of resources that way they, they can complete the entire process of, is it not that a democratic procedure? Is it not what other governments, let me say uh, that regime we are running in the country is far away from any element of being democratic for this very same purpose that expenditures of the state cannot be auditable because they are criminally organized. These things carried out by the state, by that rogue regime, by, by that dictatorship, have no basis of people's, contact, people's effort and interest. And it is undemocratic. All what we've seen as programs and developments in the country, they have got no purpose of being influenced from the grassroots, from the interest, from the condition. That's why they do not make an impact in the life of the society. Instead, we are seeing a life of a society, of a, in our society, of a few surviving and the rest perishing. We are now unable to account of a population that is unable to grow for the last 20 years. In spite of having some growth rate of about two to three percent or one point something at some stages of the year. But someone will say the country is better than it were before and it is now. Whilst we are trying to, well, whilst at the same time we're saying a population is diminished in the whole year, someone will say there's progress in our society. So it's because of lack of democracy. So the, the usefulness of that school, of that institution, the usefulness, I'm trying to say the growth, the purpose of the growth of a review from saying in the last year, we had about 20% enrollment into unions in the workforce. This year or next year, we are going to 30%, 40%. It's growth, it's progress. You are looking at it on the basis because the, the unions must grow. Democrats must help the unions to grow. They must help the unions to grow, not only in numbers, but also qualitatively, which means the understanding of workers must be clear now about inflation. They must be clear about in the cost of bargaining, the percentage in the bargaining. Why are we saying 8% today? Why are, we, why are we not saying 13%? Why are we not saying 5%? Why are we getting zero and continue to leave? So all those things help because it is only the union through its democratic lifestyle that it can make workers to understand dynamics and their condition they are in. But when you look at the space we are in today now, we probably do not see that. We may not necessarily be so comfortable to say, most of the unions, some who have just joined the workplace, have even no understanding about uh, the livelihood of the trade union lifestyle in the, in, the, in the environment where they are, which is also a nightmare because there must be visibility. 
Democracy doesn't exist in the secrets. The Communist Party will be it's building its own units, invisible units, sometimes visible in the workplace. But there can be no way that their activities can be invisible. On the last note, comrade, it will be we are when we will work up with the issue of the trade union. There is one thing that comrades in the country can learn from what the late comrade Njabulo did, basically trying to execute and implement the same policy. Working in the branch, I remember when he was elected in SNAT, in the branch, he was not uh, eligible because he had a few years according to the constitution. We looked at the SNAT constitution. The SNAT constitution said you don't qualify. Then he said, you can't then press yourself to it. He said, no, but the record says, I'm them. said to them, make them aware of your condition. That no, you are still not ready to, 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 to lead a union. You can't be default. When you come, you can't be default. There is nothing in a hurry. We are not writing anything. We are acting in a principle. It's a principle that respecting of the trade unions is the attitude of the Communist Party. It's our attitude because we know that is the school of democracy. You don't enter the school anyhow. You don't behave loudly in the school. There are rules because there's a purpose for the organization of that school. How to work, how to build society to go to the future. So we looked at those dynamics. We, we acted on that thing. We, we observed. We didn't say that the SNAT constitution is wrong because it, it, it says you must come in and go in. There was a purpose for the SNAT to develop such a constitution. And then the reason to develop that has been defined by the workers themselves. The SNAT organization, the members of SNAT know that principle, why it exists. So we cannot come up and default that constitution. We entered into that same, very same position, very same note, very same uh, 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 principles. And then the worker says, no, you can serve at that local. And then you work with us here, and we are even closer to the eligible. So, but we want you now because the Congress is not giving come up. It was on the decision, democratic decision of that. Could that branch be able to defend that position now? Probably, you said, yeah, if they can do it, yes, they can do it. I'm trying to, to illustrate this comments because there can be no democracy without processes. We don't want to say it is just a thrown in concept that must be followed. It is a practice, and its basis of the practice must have grassroots impact and influences. Then, in the course of life, then you, you, it, it makes everything to work. So, he entered into the space and participated and created a room and space for the operation activities. Not a secret that he had, while working in the branch, his relationship with the branch. With the, with, the, with the national uh, office had a very cordial in this problem. As such, when he fell sick, it was the national office that sent transport to his work site to say, no, we must rescue you. What's happening here? He said, no, I'm, I'm not feeling well. They took him through the bus transport from the headquarters of that. But he has not been, he has not served in that, that organization. So he, he had, so we have got our Communist Party members who really understand, who understand the notion. So to say, in the whole course of the past like this, how many activities and action has it persuaded that has had and supported trade union activities in SNAT and across SNAT? They are multiple measured based on his life and his relationship and how he understood the whole life and pattern, how he have to work and operate in trade union. So in, in, in a national community, say, there is a condition of practice, but if there is no orientation of the democratic elements, there is no purpose for us to find our own comrades in the party playing or serving the, the work of the, the party in any of, the, of these organizations with diligence. If in otherwise they will fail to respect basic principle governing the very same institution they are seeking to participate in. In a trade union, if there's an attitude, there's an undemocratic attitude that any member of the party has or thinks drives his, his notion. It shouldn't be seen or associated with the practice of the Communist Party because it has got no long-term objective or interest of the Communist Party. The, the trade union today in the country is contested. Yes, truly it is contested and contested by array of forces. In the, in the case of these forces involved, it is clear that one are those who say we must protect 
protect the, the trade union from the communist capture, from the communist influence. And truly, these are the elements that are now ex in existence. And in this course of existence of the elements, the workers are connecting with the CPS irrespective of the outcry. That's why you have seen some other members have been uh, paged because others felt they are more, they are communist party members. Like you say, our organization must exist in the trade union, but not the communist. And, and, and somehow it is appealing to many people. It's, it's literally appealing to say, yes, let's protect the, the only The only threat to the trade union is not the, the enemy, it's not the, the, the oppressors. It's not the regime in our case, it's the trade union. They are fighting the trade, the CPS, worse than they are fighting, they will be fighting the elements that perpetrates the enslavement of our workers, the poor working conditions, the low wages. And they do, they do so stupidly, but it's systematically because they are in caucuses, in closed doors. They will do it in the backyard. They are not able to, to use democratic principle to defend that or to, to, to sustain their position. So if then the Communist Party can enter into that space in the same notion, what we suffer is it will be the trade union movement. Because workers will say we have nothing to defend ourselves with because our environment of work has been tormented by elements that are non-workers, that are of non-working elements. Or as such that we say of we are being ganged up by the collection of the political, politically inclined people. Over, over, over our own condition. So they will feel defeated. So if they feel defeated, it will mean the CPS has betrayed the workers because it is only the Communist Party, whether it is on other syndicates, whether it is an whatsoever force, whether there is any form of oppressors against workers, it is the CPS and CPS alone that can have the right the main capacity to salvage the trade union movement, the workers and get their unions work. They want to use the word of trade union independence. It's an all things. All what is being taught is all things. Independence of what? When you speak about workers' control, yes, the workers themselves can be mass run control. But when you speak about workers' independence, we also have to clarify independent from what? In the cause of the workers' control. When the Communist Party speak about workers' independence, it is the very same foundation that we say, if they have got no class consciousness, they can never be independent. Their independence is based on their class consciousness. Then their independence will then say, we are dependent to the working class and to the victory of the struggles of everyone in any aspect of the life. So the dependence of the workers is based on, in the cause now, is based on how far are we democratizing in our country? How soon do we build a proper democracy in our own country? It is the only way that the workers' dependence is. The salvation of the condition of workers in our country now is now entirely dependent on the advance of the struggle for democracy. And that struggle for democracy is what the workers themselves should have exactly explained because they know what democracy can do, can create because in their own life in the trade union, under all conditions, they have survived because democracy has been the life of wine. So they must be speaking about the concept that they've already known and they've already cre created in their own mind. It is already existing in, in their own faces. So it is in that policy that those, that element can clarify and can easily make our, 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 our comrades a, a, a feel very, very comfortable too participate and work with the trade union, with the, with the Communist Party. And uh, as a, a matter of uh, maybe comment, it would be like, it is important to know that uh, now the Communist Party as it exists now, but it is still had to, to do much. It cannot be wished away because it is not prepared. It cannot disappear in the life in the trade union. You know. But instead, we must work quicker and harder. Help our workers to join unions, to understand the purpose of unions, to know very well that there is no any cry of an individual worker that makes sense without 
the cry coming from the voices of a trade union. And we will make sure that this kind of activity clarifies and seriously exists and work in, in the entire operation of uh, the CPS as we will be as we continue to discharge more of our cadres of the fires calibring uh, of the fires orientation who will then say for every union in the country the communist party must be capable or must be able to at least uh, submit its volunteers to do work not for the unions but for the revolution uh, under the guidance of the communist party with the uh, strict rules as you say and uh, without uh, bringing any element of being too clever to the others but just to say we need to participate and collectively engage so there is this seminars of the communist party will be rolling out Congress throughout uh, the year and throughout the life of the communist party because it is important that uh, we monitor all our activities, how we are doing things, but our main and our principles are clear. Our role is not to turn unions into Communist Party. But from the best of the trade unions, we have no choice but to, to rob them in because they're struggling through the Communist Party, because they're struggling for the workers and their freedom can only be achieved through when the workers are in control of the state. And uh, we will go on completely and explain that uh, socialism is not a, a dictatorship of the communist, but is a dictatorship of the working class. And it is the class that the workers must explain that the workers are an indominance that will be in a dictatorship. So it is also to our passion that the trade union movement, the school of democracy, must live and survive and must remind, reward, must graduate people. Most of these graduates, as it were, are graduates that must be serving in the revolution than it has been that graduates from the trade union go to serve the rogue regime and then perpetrate the same slavery that is there, which is something that as a communist party we are saying we need to correct. It shouldn't be a school that produces autocrats or that produces a dictators. It should be a school that promotes proper, proper democratic values uh, or Democrats that can advance society and that appreciates that the pace of movement of society is determined by all the, those who we think they are the poorest today. But for us to achieve freedom, democracy, it is important that you need to work very harder and stronger now and influence the elements of democracy. Comrades, uh, I have spoken for more than uh, for almost an hour now. Uh, thank you, Comrade, for, 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 for this uh, opportunity. For us as Communist Party, the union and the strikes defines one thing to us. If we see a union, we are seeing a strike. We ask every comrade, when is a strike going to take place in your union? because we have seen that the working conditions are terrible. So there's a need now to resolve them through action, through a strike. So our, our motivation combat is actually that. It is the action, the revolutionary action that determines the strength of our activities. So democracy and trade workers control in unions is not replaced by, trade, by CBS control of unions. It's workers control of unions and workers' democracy can make workers to control unions. And when workers control the unions, the unions can grow and become a formidable force that can make the benefits, economic and even political benefits that the workers, the working class deserves are achieved. Thank you, Congo. Uh, thank you so much, Comrade General Secretary, for that uh, very crucial input into the workshop. Um, I hope comrades were taking notes as you were speaking because these were very crucial elements and a very crucial contribution to the workshop. Um, for instance, 
we, he raised issues such as the question of the link between the Communist Party and the trade union movement. And especially down at the, work, at the workplace on the shop floor, the meaning of that link and the context and the content of Communist Party and the working class. That is the link therein. Um, we also raised the issue of, uh, for instance, that uh, as we talk about uh, this workshop of trade union, the trade union as the school for democracy. That democracy, when we talk about socialism, we're not talking about democracy for a few. We're talking about democracy for all, democracy that is led by the working class. And thus, in our context today, the question of, of making the trade union a democratic organization is important because this is exactly what will prepare the working class um, to take society forward into socialism and lead it until uh, the, the state with us away. And uh, in this regard, the question of that, he, that Comrade Gias raised, the question of political education, now it becomes very serious. Uh, this is, this of course, if what we are doing right now is part of that continuous political education. And our cadres here, they know their tasks, especially when we Remember again, that link between the Communist Party and the trade union movement. Now they will know their tasks when it comes to political education, their link with the trade unions, with uh, workers on the ground in terms of working with them to organize. And uh, the question of accountability is a very crucial one for all unions. As, as the same with uh, all other organizations, that the accountability of union members themselves to the union, to building it, also the leadership, the leadership's accountability to the members. So those are crucial things and you leading, which would lead to a more democratic process, especially leading to strike actions. So, but of, of course, the, the question that GS raised as well, the, the issue of internal discussions of um, unions, within unions themselves, when workers are able to find expression in their own union and the decisions becoming a product of those discussions. Perhaps just as a last point, perhaps for discussion, uh, something to lift out from this as well, among comrades. The question of uh, the, the, that, that relationship between unions and uh, people who are not members of the union, non-members and other organizations as well. That becomes crucial and uh, probably Comrade Quintin, when he comes in, he may also want to touch on this one as well, to come in and say that link, because sometimes you will get reactionary unions who will want to isolate themselves and become a super union which removes everyone else from working class struggles. So such discussions need to, to be undertaken by comrades. We will have these discussions uh, after Comrade Quintin comes in. So comrades must just take these notes. Comrade Quintin will come in right now and uh, give us keynote, the keynote address. Uh, as I said earlier, Comrade Quintin is, has very, uh, uh, it's, it's broad experience over many years in the trade union movement, uh, having been also in leading in Napsau 
and also now in, in Tukoswa. Um, so, Comrade Quintin. Morning, comrades. Thank you very much, Comrade Payas. Um, thank you very much, Comrade Moderator. Um, uh, Chair, I must first make a disclaimer here. Meaning the GS is known to me. We have worked together and uh, I wish to confirm what he said about uh, snacks by then because uh, I was the GS at the time when he, when he joined us. In fact, he was not the deployed comrade. The comrade who had been deployed before had been um, assigned to go and spy on what was going on in, in snacks by then. Unfortunately, he could not join us for certain reasons. And then when comrade GS joined us, we worked very strongly together. And there were people that were then spying on the union because there was this general view from some comrades to say, hey, this union was too much on the left. So someone had to go in and apply breaks there. Unfortunately, that was not uh, the case. When I looked at the topic, Comrade Chair, I realized that you no, know, there is so much that one can talk about trade union as a school for democracy. Comrade Chair, you will recall that in this country, I'm not sure whether you were born by then. We had the 1980 Industrial Relations Act. It took us up until the year 1996. And you know, you recall what was happening in all those years. And that is where Comrade Jan Stolaut say, played a very key role in mobilizing workers against royal oppression in the country insofar as um, demanding their rights. In 1996, prior to that, in fact, there was a president in SNAT called the Albert Shabang. At some point in time, he had to be suspended from work for his role as the next president. But the teachers paid for his salary. Well, they paid for his salary, just like we did at Snacks when a comrade uh, GS went into exile, the workers, I was not even there myself, continued paying him this stipend of, we call it the salary, but it was a stipend. We didn't have money at the time. Until the very same comrades decided to take it away, much against the decision of the members who said, we will continue paying Comrade Kenny wherever he is. So they paid him for quite a, quite a number of months. Now the same holds true with the Albert Shabang. He was in suspension without pay, they paid him. They just paid him and he came back. So he joined government again as a teacher. But in 1996, he had been elevated to the, to the position of Minister for Labor. So he came 
up with this 1996 Act, now amending the 1981, to neutralize the trade unions and their strength. The 1996 uh, Data Relations Act classified the entire civil service under essential services, meaning that they could do like notably though was that rather than stating that the country had the ratified ratified convention 87 in 1978 on the 26th april 1978 and again you will recall what what happened in 1978 that is when the then minister of Tingunta, in Red Tingunta, Chigelele, was introduced by the then King of the Second, when he introduced also the Tingunta system of governance. You see the contradiction. You ratify Convention 87, even before other countries could do it. In the same year, in June, when I think if I, if I recall quite well when the Tinkuta was introduced, but I don't can't remember. But it was in the same year, 1978, when Tinkuta system was introduced. We were coming from the 1973 decree now from you know. So suppose I was now coming with a, a modest it also kind of experiment uh, advised by uh, Van Vec. So this 1996 Act lasted for only four years. And that is when Comrade Jan fought very hard, even up to the level of ILO. And the country he, he was, if I recall quite well, in 1998 was placed on a special paragraph for the first time because of the same reason. Hence, in the 2000, we had to come up with this 2000 data relations act as a country because of the pressure that we're getting from the International Labor Organization and other countries as well. I also want to remind Congress about the March to Matlacheni and Kamkweli, when those chiefs were evicted and uh, replaced by uh, Makuga. What happened there is that we protested as workers, but why? Because we felt there was need for democratic reforms in the country so that other instances of that nature could not happen again. We went to Mpumalanga because meetings were banned in the country now, we couldn't meet anymore. We went to Mpumalanga. We came up with this document called Mpumalanga Declaration, which gathered Dust at some point in time. I'm not sure if it's still there now, but I think it's getting dust still. I'll come back to it. But you will recall that there was this issue of 27 demands that had rocked the country. in 1996, but one of the demands, demand number 21 was the issue of democratic reforms, introduction of multi-party democracy. And then demand number 27, which was somehow controversial to some comrades, because they didn't understand it, and agree with the GS to say, if the workers are not conscientized enough, 
they will rebel against the leadership because they don't know. In trade unionism, you don't impose. It is the other way around. The members tell you what to do. You can't just go and strike without being mandated to do so. Demand number 27 was about repeal of the 1973 decree. Hence, I would say, Comrade Chair, we come from, you know, from a long history where there have been struggles in this country, struggles that had to do with the betterment of not only workers in formal employment, the working class as well, including attempts to democratize the country. There was a view that you no, know, some comrades want to remain in opposition for a long time because of uh, because later there were some kind of donors and they were coming in into the strategy. But before that there were no funds. As the comrade Diaz was saying that you know we're collecting four thousand rents per month. I mean it is it's not by then. The subs were four rents by then, and then we changed to 10 rents. But typical again, to even change from four rents to 10 rents, because we're paying four rents for, for a number of years. People didn't want to pay part ways with even a one rent to add to the subs. 10 rents was even worse. We were almost, they almost killed us. Now, when we came back from Bumalang, now to implement the declaration, I do recall that on the 9th of December, Comrade Mario was arrested in Baban. May he so rest in peace. We went to check him. He said, Rested as well. We were in Tlangan. And then on the 14th of uh, December, the following day, I was beaten to pulp. Comrade, there was Manzini. Together with Pusat Lamini, who is now a member in the, in the industrial court having been placed there by the Gozo. Comrade BG Dama was uh, shot at Tatikulu. In fact, they wanted to disorganize the workers. So we got arrested and we almost dismissed from the civil service by then because there were so many charges preferred against us. But I'm just giving you the history of a uh, brief history of what has been happening in the country during those days. Coming now to trade union democracy, I decided to approach this matter from the giving the labor framework as to what does it provide and so that comrades can realize if there is or are any gray areas where can the cps now put more effort in addressing the gap because i think the legal framework does provide for the issues that the gs was talking about 
The issue here is compliance. What makes Cambridge not comply? Why are we in court these days? Are we complying with legal framework? What are the organizations doing to alert their members about these legal provisions? Should a person being a member of the CPS violate his constitution, his union constitution, and the CPS declared quite about it? Or whichever organization? Is it appropriate for the CPS? I'm giving an example, comrade. Yeah. Is it appropriate for the CPS to keep quiet when someone belonging to it? Violate the constitution of, an, of, of, of his organization. Can someone misrepresent the organization by misbehaving in a federation or in an organization? Clearly, no. The IR Act defines a trade union as a combination of employees whose principal aim is to regulate relations between employers and employees. Very brief, it does not talk about any other thing. There's relations between employers and employees. And the federation is defined as a body registered in terms of this act, which is wholly comprised of employers or a combination of employers associations or trade unions or staff associations, as the case may be. Now, what does, it, what does it mean now? A trade union is just workers together with a common purpose. Six people can form a trade union in the standard, register it, and then apply for, it, for, for recognition if they miss the threshold. Now, in this case, we have trade unions. There are trade unions which have been registered and have recognition. I'll make an example in the public sector. We have four unions. Napsau, Nat, Snagab, and uh, Certainly. Now, um, you also have other unions which are registered in the civil service. They are not part of the bargaining chamber. Why? It's one of the day, not today. I'll make an example. There is SWAPA. SWAPA membership is more than SNACAP. SNACAP has a recognition agreement, SWAPA doesn't have. You can ask me later, not for now. But those are unions that come about because they are aggrieved of a particular, on a particular you know, issue. And they decide, no, 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 we should perform our own union, which I don't believe is correct. This country only had two unions some point in time. A federation chair is a broad church. You have progressives, conservatives, aligned and unaligned. And clearly it cannot be led along political lines. The chair said, Snacks had the president being a, an LLC member and the, 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 the treasurer, and him being a Swayoka and the GS being a Pudema member. You know, the union was not being run along the lines. There were documents that were guiding the operations of the union. Even now, any other union has documents guiding its operations. 
where you don't agree, it cannot be issues of important nature. It can only be issues of the Union of Federation. Now, you will realize that there is no mention of democracy in both definitions of a trade union and federation. However, in operationalizing a trade union in this country, and even under international labor law, it is the same. The, the, the principles and values are the same. They may differ to an extent, but the tenets of democracy are there. In the legal framework, make no mistake, Section 29 of the Industrial Relations Act of 2000 defines what should be included in the constitution of a union. It says, in the constitution of an organization shall include the following. The name of organization and undertaking or industry or trade in which its activities on behalf of its members will be carried on. Now, it also says there should be mention of the offices in the organization, which shall be the offices of the chairperson, secretary, and treasurer. I think uh, there's no president here because. I think because of uh, the fact that you know, in the year 2000, there was no, remember this guy was not uh, at some point in time, went uh, his second said, you know, you call yourself president in my country. You know? Hence, there were no, there's no provision for the presidency, there's chairpersons. Provision of an election by a secret ballot for all office, offices at least once every four years. You know, in this country, Comrade Chair, we have unions which last had Congresses in 2013. Someone sits in so much money. We last had a Congress in 2013. The Constitution of the Federation put succinctly clear that Every affiliate should adhere to its constitution and should submit returns to the federation. Submit membership figures. Submit audit statements. Some have not been seen. As to whether they submit them, it's another issue. But this is what is happening. You know, Comrade Pius wanted us to, what did what me to refer to the trade union movement? This is what then is applicable. As to whether affiliates do comply with this, it's another issue. Provision of a general meeting open to all members at least once a year. Now, for you to claim to be having a mandate, you must have heard it from the members, Comrade Yes. The law provides for that. At least once a year. Whether this thing is happening or not, it's another issue. But the trade union must have that. It further goes on to say, provided that an extraordinary general meeting may be called, giving at least seven days notice of that meeting. Now, these are the areas where the CPS has to come in to say, are you complying with the law? Imagine, Comrade Chair, these are requirements in the Industrial Act, the Relations Act, which must be enshrined in the constitution of any organization in the country, trade union, for that matter. So you can't have a constitution that doesn't have this, which means all the constitutions, because now these unions are registered, 
all the constitutions of the youth unions, they comply with this. But are the leaders of the unions complying with this? And if not, why not? And what are we doing to ensure that comrades comply with the provisions of the Act and their own constitution? The number of terms a member is eligible for re-election into office, this must be in the constitution. Now, once you attempt to convene an extra general uh, congress or whatever kind of meeting where you intend to extend the period of office for term of office bearers, they will challenge you because a constitution can only be amended in a, in a congress and there must be reasons why you want to amend the constitution in a congress to extend your term of office. Now, interestingly, there is a provision that says now, a provision that says the general meeting shall be the forum for deciding the policies of the organization for reviewing of officers' conduct and organization's affairs. So there is internal democracy in trade unions, according to the Act, we must comply with it in the labor movement. And it also goes on to say, the organization's officers are representatives and are bound by decisions of a general meeting. Not their own decisions. Leaders implement in the Federation. The Federation implements decisions of Congress. The Federation implements what was decided by Congress. And the General Council guides the national leadership in implementing those decisions of Congress. That is why there must be a record of all those decisions. So that as and when you implement, you implement something that you are drawing from the Congress resolutions to say, we are great on this. Let us implement this. Let us implement this. But to bring issues that are not even discussed at Congress, issues that have not been discussed by unions themselves in their own general council, you sit as an NEC or NOBs, you decide, or oh, probably the GS of a, of, a, of a union decided something, then you go and present it to the Federation to implement. It doesn't work like that. You will be challenged if you do, if you do, if you do that by your very same members. I've actually seen a matter being brought to the Federation. Uh, and when I checked with uh, the General Council now, uh, members of that particular union's necessary leadership, the issue was not discussed. Check the records of this union's uh, uh, general council reports. The issue is not there. Where did you derive, for, uh, derive it from? Now, this is the internal democracy in trade unions. We're talking about that. You know, you don't become an executive president, executive treasurer, executive secretary in a trade union. You implement decisions of a collective. Which collective? The members themselves. The issue of fees and subscriptions payable, and if it talks about the maximum period of arrears permitted before a member losing his financial standing, you don't just suspend the person or if an affiliate because uh, they're not paying. But if it says six months, then you can suspend the affiliate. It surprises at times where you see an affiliate not paying, but you see the leaders of that affiliate living Lazarus lives. 
I do recall that when uh, one was at Snacks with the comrade uh, GS, the little money that we're getting, we're accounting, it, we're, accounting, we're accounting for it. But at the same time, we're sacrificing. I know where he was spending his money. He knows where I was spending my money as well. In a trade union, you go there to sacrifice, not to make money, not to become rich because of the trade union. So a trade union is not just money spinning machine for self enrichment. Now the act also provides to say provides that you know the constitution of unions must also have a provision that says only fully paid up members may vote in the election of officers, nominate a candidate for any office, be nominated for or be elected to any office office or express views on candidates and other issues. You cannot just then express yourself on any particular individual if you're not a member of that organization. You are not paying subs. And then you come and say ah, blah 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 blah. No, you can't. Your, the constitution of that organization forbids you from doing so. Similarly, even if you were a member but now suspended, it means you can't because you are no longer paying subs. Only those who are in good standing. So now you can't, in short, you can't go to a Congress if you're not in good standing. Luckily enough, in the federation that I lead, the constitution provides that you can subject to approval of the general council, but you will not have speaking rights and voting rights. It is more flexible than the act provides. The Act also provides for grounds on which an officer or member may be suspended, expelled from the office or from membership. And each ground being specific, it says the procedure for suspension or expulsion from office or from membership, including provision that the affected officer or member be fully informed in writing of the allegations against him that the member shall have the reasonable opportunity to respond to those allegations. You don't, these are things that one has to be very clear about, the right to be heard. They're also there in common law. The treatment of workers by affiliates Things that we have seen in public space of late are quite worrying. But it also, also it goes on to say, and then the members shall have a right to appeal to a special or general meeting of the organization. In this particular instance, the latter one, the, on the issue of appeal to the special or general meeting, the courts have now taken can a different view on this particular one. How do you suspend someone now and say you must uh, appeal four years later? You can't. We are depriving of that member of a right. And then you are saying people were not there when you suspended that person must go and decide his fate. And if you read that together with the right to be heard, it means you must go to the Congress. But unfortunately, you won't be a delegate. 
So hence, the courts have come up with a view now to say, no, 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 no. The moment you bring a matter to court, we decide to determine the matter. You can't wait for Congress or special meeting of whatever nature. And I know some, uh, some affiliates have actually raised this to the, in defense of their arguments and they, they failed. The Constitution must also provide a provision, have a provision for keeping of full and accurate accounts by the treasurer or appropriate officer for the annual audit of those accounts by, the, by a competent auditor appointed by the organization who shall not be a member of that organization and for the availability of to all to all members of a fully audited annual statements of account you don't bring a spreadsheet you don't bring handwritten accounts reports you bring audited statements there is a tendency in trade unions to remove the management report page. That report tells you as to what's going on in the organization. That management report page, it tells you again what's going on because before the final management report is issued, In most unions, so I'm told, they will tell you we did not see that management report or management letter. But it must be signed by yourselves and sent back to the auditors. And the, that page is removed from audited uh, statements. There must be a qualification of that audit report. Whether this is a qualified or unqualified report, it must reflect it there. In fact, um, the Financial Re Re Services Secretary Authority wants that now. And any auditor who fails to do so is suspended. I know of one audit firm that has been suspended uh, at once. And I know that some organizers have been used that, that the audit firm uh, to qualify their audit reports in their favor. So now they are tough on this particular one. The provision for banking and investment of the organization's funds. Now, the funds are not supposed to be banked by an individual. It must be an organization that decides to do so. The constitutions normally provide that for funds to be invested, there must be a decision of the general council. It cannot be the national leadership that decides to bank the funds because they change. Now, there is also mention of a provision for paying out organizations' funds, including the authority to sign checks. Normally, in trade unions, there are about two or three signatories that uh, are required for checks to be. But then there is also a silent writer there now to say for every expenditure, there must be minutes. Otherwise, funds will be abused. That was the case when one was still at Snacks and the So I don't know what the position is now, but there was the position. You cannot just spend funds without a decision. Then unions should also have a finance policy because the law provides that there must be a condition under which a member may become entitled to any financial benefit provided by the, by the organization. Now, whether you make claims 
of whatever nature. These must be contained in a financial policy order, not in the constitution, because the constitution cannot have any, everything, but it must be somewhere in a document where it says, this is how we're going to claim funds. It's SNACs and the NAPSA with the finance policy. I don't know whether it's still there or not now, and whether it still works or not, or whether it's being adhered to or not, but it is something that must be there in the unions. Provision for amending the constitution. That must be very clear. When should it be amended? How? I know of a constitution of a union. The NAPSA one says, in the Congress, there must be two thirds of the members voting on those amendments. And depending on the union and whether the Labour Commission did not that when approving the registration of the union, there must be provision for people to vote on the amendments. Otherwise, amendments, you recall that in the past, at uh, SFTU, at some point in time, we had four constitutions. And those constitutions were all speaking different languages, and they, only a few individuals had them. And the provision for appointment of trustees. Now, uh, these are not males and females, but these are males and females of good status. It must be people who understand what their role is. But I know of uh, an organization that is a, a trustee uh, who cannot even differentiate between T and B. Members should be taught as to what exactly do you look for when you are electing certain office bearers. And that is where organizations like the Communist Party should come in and say, hey, let us make an assessment of what, what, of what is going on in trade unions. What are the strengths? What are the weaknesses? Can we come up, can we come up with a plan to, try to address those issues? so that people can know, people can be conscious of what exactly are they looking for? Because if you are going to elect a trustee who is not competent enough, what are you doing? You're doing injustice. Then you're saying people should lose their monies. People should lose their valuables. People should become rich because you've got bystanders who are now trustees of uh, the organization. So they must be taught. One critical issue, which normally leaders don't like a lot, the constitution must provide for the inspection of the register of members and other books of the organizations by any member. You do that in other unions, you become an enemy. Because you've demanded to exercise your right. It's in your own constitution, it's even in the act. Ah, they'll be using all these other you know, funny words, uh, counter revolutionary, or whatever, uh, spy, whatever. Uh, it is your right, you must see how the money uh, is spent. It must also provide or make a provision for informing members of the progress and result of any negotiations entered into by the organization aimed at conclusion, alteration, amendment, or abandonment of any collective agreement, such other agreements or other matters or issues to which the organization is so, is, or is to be party to. Now, you don't affiliate to organizations without the mandate. Once people have decided now, are educated on why they have to choose between ITUC and the uh, WAFTU, they will decide, not you as leadership deciding. Similarly, 
if we are to if, if, to affiliate in 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 in, 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 in whether in I uh, to Koso or want to affiliate in Feswatu, it is the members that must decide, mm -hmm. but they must be conscientized. These are the gray areas where organizations like the Communist Party can come in now to say, how do we conscientize the workers? How do we take them up? Let them understand their rights. Let them understand the future. At any rate, a, a, a federation or a union does not belong to the leaders, it belongs to the members. The members influence decisions and not the leaders influence decisions. Now, uh, Chair, having said that, having said that, I, I want to touch on other aspects of uh, the rights to be or not to be a member, and also prohibited practices in a trade union. In terms of that. It says a person eligible for membership in an organization under this act has a right to membership in the organization if that person pays any fees that are payable to it and has a right to remain a member as long as the person complies with the rules of the organization. Now, as long as you comply with the rules, if you don't, then the organization has a right to kick you out but subject to compliance with what, with what I said earlier on, right to be heard. A person eligible for membership of an organization has a right not to join such an organization. You cannot force everyone to join, even if that person is eligible for him or her to join the organization. That is why you have to recruit and if you recruit a member, tell him or her of the benefits of joining the union that you are recruiting him to join. Now it says it again, again, an employer shall not infringe on any employee's rights to belong or not to belong to an organization of employee's choice. Employers, have got this tendency of saying, no, 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 no. We are going to form a staff association. We are going to be part of this. No, 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 no. Workers decide. But this right normally is not defended uh, most of the time because these people are normally not members of unions. So they must first be members of the unions. But my take would be that you don't have to wait until the person becomes a member of the union. The moment a person raises an issue, you start by assisting him as a communist. Because we are, you are there to assist the working class, members or non-members of the organization, workers or non-workers. You are there as a volunteer to assist Upon seeing the good things that, that you are doing, we will follow you. You'll be encouraged to join a union. But if a union doesn't do well, you say, join this union, and this person joins and doesn't get satisfaction, what do you do? You come back to you and say, you didn't help me. You are also a member of the union. Assist this person on behalf of the union and don't claim credit. Wait a minute. An employer shall not require membership of any organization as a, as a condition of employment or offer any form of inducement. Now, these are the rights which are not being defended. And such rights ought to be defended at all costs. The union leaders may not be aware of this, but what about you as an activist? 
shouldn't you trouble yourself to know about this and assist when you are saying the communist party now assists the unions this is what members of the communist party must know about for them to assist you go there to teach because you know what the legal provisions are in relation to that matter there is one that we normally don't pay attention to is the constitution of an organization shall not impose any condition obligation or restriction which is oppressive unreasonable or unjust i know of uh, one union that lost a case recently because he was making resolutions that were said to be that were deemed to be unjust by the court and these resolutions had been operating for years but then the court felt no 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 these resolutions are unjust and they are not in the constitution so now whatever resolutions are made immediately you make them and they put the bearing in the constitution you then call for an amendment of the constitution in the next congress or conference because that is where amendments are made you go to the conference amend the constitution because there is a resolution that has an impact on that constitution and if you leave it outside the constitution and you rely on it for years letting it become a practice one day you'll be challenged on it and there is one critical one from the chair which says without restricting the generality of subsection 4 subsection 4 talks about the issue of uh, requiring membership from members no organization shall discriminate in its constitution against any person on the grounds of sex race color creed matter status sex pregnancy tribal ethnic you know the usual uh, kind of uh, discrimination ethnic or clan extraction political opinion or affiliation if you're a member of the communist party you don't need to be based if you're a member of the nlc you don't need, you need to be based if you're a member of a uh, demo or Yosayoko or whatever you know, no 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 those things don't come in trade unions you are there about issues of workers and the working class let me come to the issue of democracy or reforms, Comrade Chair, which is going to be my last part now. Comrade Chair, there is no provision in the Act that allows trade unions to be part of political organizations or to form alliance with political organizations or to have relations with political parties however members of trade unions in their own right being workers they have the right to become members of political parties in fact what encourages them to join political parties because in football, you can either be a left-footed player or a right-footed right player. You cannot be a, by, a bystander. Now, trade unionism just being a unionist, like someone who comes from England or wherever, or wherever, you come to a country, you find two teams playing, whether it's Mbawani Highlanders or Manjini Wanderers, 
from the two teams, one jazz will attract you. It will be the maroon or the black one. The moment you take sides and like one of the two teams playing, then it means you have taken a decision. The same was true with unions. You can't be active. You can't be a union member without joining a political party. Even if you have not joined, but there is one party that you have a soft spot for, you will vote for if it gets to power. However, the act does provide that an employee who is not engaged in essential services has a right to take part in a peaceful protest action to promote social economic interests of workers. Now, the key word is social economic interests of workers. There is no political, political social control. Now, um, the courts in this particular one have come up with a position that there is a thin line between political issues and the purely labor issues. So there is nothing that prohibits workers from uh, actually dealing with issues of a public nature, demonstrating for such. Starting way back in the year 2000, when you came back from Nelsville in Bumalanga, there was Judge Kenneth Gambole. Kenneth Gambole is a GS. Kenneth Gambole was a magistrate for a long time, the father to one of his bishop, Matthew Gambole. On the 15th of December, having been a magistrate for too long, he was now a principal magistrate. So they promoted him to the industrial court. He didn't last very long because by the time he was promoted, he was already old, but he did a very good job. On the 15th of December, around the thing, there was an application by government against the SFTU and the Swaziland Nursing Association. Because that time, the Swaziland Nursing Association was not part of SFT because previously they had been part of SNACS until they decided to be, a, to be a breakaway union. Now he said in his ruling, because government had taken SFTU to court regarding this Pumarang articulation, because you know, we're causing havoc in the country. We were beating beaten up left and right. Remember I said to you uh, on the 14th, I was beaten to pulp. Uh, I almost died. It was in Manzini, the mall by Cruz and Gampalera, who was now the minister, was still a young boy as well. And the three parts died, and they died, and they, I know they are over Those who you know, portalize me. Now, his ruling was that the, he, he, he dismissed the application by government. But however, he should in order, we said, the applicants and respondents should meet to discuss the issues that gave rise to the Mpumalanga Declaration. Now, the Mpumalanga Declaration at demand number 21 is the issue of democratic reforms, and demand number 27 being the issue of uh, um, repeal of the 1973 decree. So, dating way back at that period, we had the platform to discuss this. So some of us viewed this as a window to political engagement. However, there was a debate within the trade union uh, movement. And uh, I'm not sure what the political party's view was really on this, because I do recall uh, myself engaging Comrade Mario on uh, several occasions on this matter to say, yeah, in his judgment, uh, but then, you know, the time was out by then. 
and he said he would talk to Comrade Jan about it to say, can we use this judgment? I had a copy of it until I lost it, but I think it's there in Swazili. It can still be found. It was somehow saying, we have a right to protest even on poker issues. He said it's clear that there's a thin line between political issues and issues of um, uh, and social political issues, you know, and the social economic issues. Meaning, workers were not restricted. We can demonstrate for anything as long as it did negatively affects our lives. The unfortunate thing is that in the section 40 of the Industrial Relations Act, you have to apply for a protest action. It has to be approved by the Labor Advisory Board, uh, whether these issues are social economic issues or they are, uh, you know, of a particular nature, and then uh, or the dispute of a uh, right because you can't uh, demonstrate, you know, for a dispute of right. So that is the challenge. And secondly, can you have a protest action that will utter you into it? Uh, to democracy, usher you into democracy, having applied for it under Section 40 in the current system of governments, when we have someone that rules the country and is above the law, is above the constitution, can someone give you democracy on a silver platter? I have never come across it. Hence, my honest view is that to change the system, there has to be a serious, serious revolution led by the progressive forces, including workers in the country. I thank you, Chair. Thank you very much. Thank you so much. Uh, thank you so much, Comrade Kuntin, for that very rich input. Uh, you have actually opened a lot for many of us, especially uh those of us who may not have experience with the workplace and practical experience in trade union politics um comrade quentin has helped us a lot especially with that that history of the trade union movement in swaziland including the question of participation of workers through that history. Uh, it was very important uh, touching on that, uh, especially from the 1973 decree. That period is important between 1973, the imposition of the 1973 decree on April 12th uh, by Sopusa, and 1978, which is the official um, the official imposition of the Dinkunda system, which still rules today. And of course, the various Industrial Relations Act uh, through time from 1980. Those are very important aspects. And uh, because to understand the question of uh, workers' democracy, we also must be historical. And this is that aspect that we need as well. Um, it will be important, of course, as we have raised, to make some reflections, uh, for us to make some reflections on that, those uh, 27 demands of 1996. Sometimes they can be forgotten and only surviving sort of in as a legacy without them existing in the mind and uh, in terms of conceptually, what was it about? What were they about? And how did they come into being? And so that we understand whether actually any of those demands have been met and to what extent. And therefore to understand whether we have to do something to take them forward and fight for them. And Comrade Quentin did uh, mention the fact that a union cannot be imposed or a union 
a union belongs to its members. And this is crucial in, the, in regard to democracy. And uh, I hope this, this aspect will open more discussions after this as well. Um, it is very important, uh, the, the question you, you, you raised, Comrade Quinton, um, that question of CPS members, for instance, who are members of trade unions, and how the party would deal with its own members who may violate uh, a union's constitution. Yeah, it, it, you, are, you are also throwing it back to us to make reflections on that. Because indeed, we do uh, get our comrades are part of society. Our comrades are also workers, they are members of unions, they are members of communities. They are responsible in their communities as members of those communities and workers, uh, unions. But also they are responsible as communists and as communist party members to be exemplary in their work on a day-to-day -day basis. And the CPS indeed cannot, cannot, cannot be ignorant of that fact that when a communist member, when a communist party member does something in society, it has an impact on the party itself. Um, you have raised an important question as well in terms of the question of a member of a union and a member in good standing. Uh, this is one aspect which I think we as the Communist Party also need to take from the trade union movement. As much as we want to impart some of our knowledge uh, on, on, uh, on unions and workers. That question of member in good standing is crucial. Of course, for us, uh, in the Communist Party, it always, it always goes beyond uh, subscriptions and, and all that. It also involves participating in uh, Communist Party activities. It also involves in participating in activities where the Communist Party has deployed you. So that member in good standing in the Communist Party becomes a lot more practical. Uh, because we are building a society of socialism here. And um, those aspects when it comes to, for instance, the political issues versus labor issues is very crucial as well. And uh, on that as well, the Communist Party is unapologetically, and it always says this thing publicly, that our cadres must work within uh, unions, must also work and be exemplar actively within uh, the workplace and uh, uh, conscientize workers, a question of conscientization, so that that labor issue and uh, political issues question can be properly understood. And so that we do not have unions that are mere workerist or mere reformist, so that we can have revolutionary unions. And of course, as the Communist Party works down uh, on the grassroots level, it always finds opposition. But we understand that mainly that opposition is planted by the regime. It is only the regime's interest, in the regime's interests, that there would be people fighting against communists in the trade union movement. It's nobody else's interest but that of the regime. So thank you so much for enlightening us on, uh, for instance, on the 
aspect of constitutions, constitutions of, of unions, how they are supposed to be and how the membership is supposed to strengthen the uh, compliance with those constitutions. Uh, this aspect we also have interest in because if, if unions are in pocket of people, then we are not going to be able to wage a relentless struggle against the absolute monarchy. And lastly, the question of, uh, you, you did raise the question of uh, funds, which is a very important aspect when uh, trade unions are concerned, where trade unions are concerned. Because if we don't solve some problems now in a democratic Swaziland, they're going to worsen. So the question of administration of funds, also that, that is, because that is also part of democracy. Administration of funds must be done democratically. That is in light of the people who actually own those funds, which are the members of the, those unions. So that democracy also must go down in there. It's not mere, merely a question of uh, voting for this one and this one. The democracy must go deeper which is the same thing of the content of our democracy that we want in Swaziland. It's not just a democracy to elect uh, public officials. It is also democracy in the economy, in the administration of the economy, including the distribution of the fruits of workers' labor. Comrade Titus. Good day, leadership. Uh, thank you for giving me this opportunity, Naomi. My encounter is to talk about the mm -hmm. issues of a Minecraft Union in our country because, because the issue the issue of Minecraft Union is really, really affecting us as comrades in the country. I think it's also delaying the revolution. I will make an example of a of, uh, of, of my union, let me make an example of my union, uh, my union which I, I, I subscribe to, which is not. The problem that we're having there, the issue of craft union, I think it creates the element of inequality even in the workplace, because you find good thing, we have, in the workplace we see, we have both groundsmen, we have both the, cook, the, the cooks there. So what is happening there, if you can, if you are talk, if you are if you are talking to teachers to say no comrades let us let us form one union which is going to 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 to, to oh, make you focus on the education set you'll find the same teachers who who claims that they are more politically conscious saying with no comrades that one is not correct this union is strictly for teachers it is it is a ending the issues of teachers well. Comrade, this thing, I think it's, it's, it's creating a division even in the workplace. Dana, comrade, what is happening? Some of these uh, members, Kula Macraft Unions, because they are not going to be able to do members, they are going to create a little unit, and if we go out there, we are going to be And if we find ourselves not fighting, or we find ourselves not helping the auxiliary staffs in our workplace, Labo, 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 Sitago, because these workers, some of them, they are not organized. So, Ngolo I think what can help, uh, what can help some of the unions to achieve this is to is to is to put more effort on our political education and the build from the grassroots level. Because what is happening, we can go see some of these uh, unions that are recycling the leaders. You find good mean. Uh, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a chairperson of a branch. Next time I go for my, my elections nationally, then when my terms expire as national, then I'll go back to my branch. So, or if I, if I don't go back to my branch, I'll go to the federation. So you find good see, Google trade unionism from the federation to all the trade unions. You find good see, we all have the same leaders. We don't grow, we are one. We don't grow as a, 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 a leadership. We don't build from the grassroots. Our main focus, the, what is happening is the builder. Maybe some of these members will find them talking about political education when, when we're going for my elections. So, now, when I come to my elections, 
this creates an affection. So the, the factions, uh, they are really, really affecting the, okay, the unions, the factions, because you don't, uh, <clears throat> you don't debate based on the, on the principles of the organization, but so based on the personality of an individual. So which really, really affects the, the unionism. I think it, all those things uh, must be taken uh, uh, as fast as we can because they are creating a division amongst the unions. Uh, we witnessed it recently, the union after the elections, uh, uh, leadership. We see there were some factions, and if you were born, I would say these factions, they are not good at all. Now we would see some people, they must be educated, our members, as to how to, to elect a, 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 a leader, because we, we elect people who are very famous, but when it comes to leadership, they, they are not showing any signs of leadership uh, to us as my members. But now when they are building up, even in their campaign, they don't give us the substance. So what do they do? We have to educate the membership at the grassroots level to understand as to how and how to, to see a leader. I, I, I will pause there for now, Comrade. Comrade Katie, we have been noted. Please go ahead. Uh, thanks for your contribution from Comrade Q and Comrade GS. I mean, I have three points that I think can assist us in terms of having the revolutionary workers. We all know that before a person becomes a worker, is a member of the community. And if that individual worker is a member of the community, automatically so, the person must have a clue or must understand about the communism or the communist parties. Because as communists, we are the part and parcel of the masses, part and parcel of the working class and the workers generally so. So my take is, although we know Gaguti, the current situation in Swaziland, not only the unions, also the political uh, organizations, more especially the liberation ones, uh, who they are highly infiltrated by the Swati regime. So my input here was that we as the Communist Party, we need to have continuous workshops of Abasebens. No matter what we be doing, a shop steward workshop where we will be training uh, workers on e leadership uh, aspect of you. How to be the best shop steward, how to be the best revolutionary in your workplace. I think it can assist us but we need to identify uh, those uh, comrades, of which I was thinking that even amongst us in the Communist Party, we do have a Abandula Basarenda. But then what is their main role that they are doing in their workplaces or in their union? You find that Ogoguti Balapayana Ekelen. To participate in a union doesn't mean that you must be part of the leadership of that union. You can participate, especially in, in mass mobilization, it's, 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 a, it's a pillar that will never stop. It's an ongoing program, liberated or not liberated. So it is our duty as communists to make sure that we go and, and mobilize Abasebenzila, So currently I just have a list of Lesnabola, Central Committee, Nagu CPS, they are consistently so. We do have a comrade Quintin, we do have comrade Nondobe, comrade Titus, comrade Tolisi, comrade Mapetu, comrade Pius, and myself. We are working. What is it that we are doing to make sure for Goguti, Ama workshops, or the demands that we want to, to reach, or the workers' revolution that we want to achieve? Say, so I think we need to start there. No mas ngabas ngatsinga champi man to kuti every in in a second uh, month we do have those workshops. I think it, it can help us a lot. 
si sulo na bazalwa na bana bazalwa ne every Sunday they go to church by vusele la by pelis from Genesis to Revelation it's just fourteen chapters but they always go there they don't say ama chapters I'm enough now so that we need to do that in vusele long the those workshops and then the other point is the point of us uh, creating a map booklet or a newsletter. Like, if for an example, we know where we will, we will be writing the, the, the working conditions that, I, that we need as the workers or the challenges that we are faced with. But then Swakatokara is based on a at different institutions. For an example, the struggle of maritime, Angegas is a Sifane, the struggle is a security, Angegas Sifane, the struggle is a transportation or the teachers or the nurses. So if it's my Dilang Alerin Jalale, according to their catalog codes, that we make sure we at least now in the Mangabang in a lot twice payment because we have a lot of, 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 of tasks and we still have crisis in terms of AMA memberships. Or those who are showing ikapa ikapa city on 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 pushing the strategy set. Must naba nala nala uma booklet lao. I think then that can also help us. Thanks very much, comrades. Thank you, thank you, comrade Katiwe. Those uh, issues uh, issues of mobilization of workers. Uh, because that mass mobilization is still crucial. Uh, and the tasks, of course, uh, because it's a question of consistency. We must be consistent in this regard. Um, there is also a, a, a task, though, uh, competitors and others may want to come in on this one. The question of young workers. Uh, at some point, to course what did have a young worker structure, um, but uh, it's, it's no longer. We don't see it now, like on on the public media. It probably still exists, but the point is, when the the importance of mobilizing young workers as well directly as an interested, uh, interested pressure group uh, uh, to build the, the, the trade union movement would be very crucial because often you find that there are experienced trade unionists who may be good or may be otherwise. Who are who have been in in the trade union movement for many years, but find that the leadership role becomes monopolized over time, and young workers remaining nothing but cheer uh, groups, which is what you raised, Comrade Titus, on. When, when it comes to workers now just voting peop for people because they are famous. And that is a question of conscientization. Comrade Njefai was very active in terms of specifically mobilizing young workers. Yeah, those, I think that is also another task that we need to look into. And from the workplaces to find ways of mobilization. So comrades may also come in on, on that aspect. Uh, if there's any comrade who also wants to come in, comrade GS, because I think you will want to have your own reactions on uh, the presentation by comrade Quintin. I would like you to come in as well to on, on, on this react to make your own uh, reflections on the presentation by comrade Quintin so that we also um, get other comrades as well uh, to be on a discussion mode. Yes, come in, comrade Yes. Thanks, thanks, Chair. Comrades, I would like to accept that there is no 
better school for democracy than the trade union movement. As I come with you, was explaining, you know, you will, like, there's an item you're you also emphasizing on the issues of the constitution. So there's a framework that guides a process, a program developed, like a framework developed by workers to say, this is how we should guide it. And the only way for a constitution to come and work with workers, we may ignore what we're saying. Workers are more interested about it, how things are done. Then when the constitution comes, it explains the process and it must be convincing that things would be done in the proper way. They saved her. Whether we're sleeping in our homes, we'll wake up tomorrow and still find our union in existence. Because there is that kind of framework that they explain the protection. As long as, even if I cannot see with my eyes, but if I hear, I can hear, I can still understand how much money was spent and how much money is left and how much money should be spent. That process of accountability, because at least my ears can capture and can receive all those uh, uh, messages. So then it, 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 it follows a pattern of engagement. A simple process, combat, as, as, as I think what is the indictment was that Umarabe we live, the democratic life says, I'm, I'm in, 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 in a local level, maybe I'm in the workplace situation, I'm a worker there. I am interested on in why so-and-so is absent from work. Why so-and-so is not happy today. It's a vision of a concern is about my relationship with the environment I'm in, but with the people I'm operating with. It starts there. Then the union upgrades it and say, I am responsible. I don't necessarily need to say, why are you like this? I'm responsible about your condition. In the United States, on the same line, it's a masculine trade union democracy. It's not different from the working class, or oh yes, working class democracy. When Robert Q was presenting, there are certain people, or uh, comrades, or trade unionists, and even outside trade unions, who are very comfortable. As long as we have got this number of workers here, cinema, enough, cinema, run an office, cinema, and staff, we are fine. Some, some, some other think genuinely that way. Say, yes, la mani velebanda pas mal kuna bangere, ningege velebanda chuine, even all of them. They will make those kind of uh, arguments. And that is like a pattern. So if we think in that way, and then he, there's nothing that comes in to change that, you will always see that kind of thing. That, but it is not democracy. Because what we're trying to make differences of is that the to be with just simple liberal democracy doesn't assist a trade union. I'm trying to bring it that you say those who are enlightened, who are better, who are clever, must lead us, like as it happens with the church. The church union doesn't work like that. It says, and never fall on the for the but she just fucking up by the the or whatsoever will dissolve them. So it doesn't work like that. This democracy is a permanent lifestyle. That works about the work and draws you are here to do this for me, for us now as an assignment, but we are placing you to do this, but we are involved with us, we are doing the team. So we are managing the affairs of the, the financial affairs of the union. As workers, you are the one who are who is championing that. So we are not managing the affairs of the union on our behalf. We are managing the affairs of the union as workers. That, that is the character of the democracy, the grassroots democracy, the working class democracy that we are, that, that we are talking about. So when you bring this subject, it is generally on that as what Comrade Q explains that there is a need for, for so much work that comes party members to do in view of the sense because the, the basic weakness, the basic a shortcoming in a trade union movement is purely because the level of organization of trade unions doesn't qualify to 
to make the Swazi trade unions to contribute towards the required transformation in our society. In the environment and space, by past track is created, allows that you should be organized better. Yes, the Industrial Relations Act, which was a sum total of the struggles between 96 towards 2000, where it was declared and as in, that led to the mass strikes, was because what it did achieve that kind of a framework. There, there is progressiveness in the, in the Industrial Relations Act of 2000. Even though, as he alluded, that probably then ignores the president because it was an intimidation. I'm saying when you make up those kind of, you, you may say it, it doesn't make any much impact, whether a chairperson or so. But it's a, it, there's a, that recognition that the unions have leadership. And leadership of unions must be based on democratic principles and values. That recognition was not necessarily that the, 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 the regime wanted to assist unions. But the unions were imposing their interest for a life of survival within the political environment, which they have never declared was suitable. But they said, but this environment, if it doesn't, if it, 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 it is so hostile to us, it is undermining our basic life. So they do fight towards reaching that end. So it becomes a gain and a benefit because it created a popular framework of existence of parties. We are not necessarily using that advantage to build and establish that democracy. But if we are looking at dialectical, it says the new society which is democratic, we envisage must replace the old that we are saying is dictatorship. But the process of the new, the conditions of the new must exist before it is born. So the trade union is an emulation of a democracy we want to create. The democratic society that we want to, to build. If there is detailed democracy in trade union life, we are guaranteed of a socialist breakthrough in the country. So maybe those who are fighting the CPS influence in the trade unions are also ideologically fighting it consciously because by their thinking and their orientation, they are liberals. They believe in manipulation of power by the enlightened over the majority who might be unenlightened. That's why the introduction of the space of consciousness and democratic parties is necessary. We may not necessarily say as the Communist Party, we want to put the relevant leaders in an organization so that we are comfortable because the placing of the individual of these relevant leaders should be a determination of the membership. But if the membership is not conscious enough, and proof that this person can be. And whenever we have got no backing to simply take the person out. So he was explaining even procedures of recalling, procedures of enrolling a membership into the organization and all those things, the recruitment procedures. So those, those are the things that, these are the practice. So in the part it says, for our activists, the struggle for democracy is part and parcel of, of, of our work. Struggle for democracy in our survival, the same battle we, we are doing it in the, in the space, where we are more interested about democratic processing, looking at our constitution, going to congresses, going to conferences, looking at all aspects that demands who are we, our members. So that, that kind of concern must be, a, 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 it is because it is the framework of our survival. The CSPS cannot survive without a democratic lifestyle, as the trade union cannot survive. But the most important, the reason to, survive, to exist also is embodied today. So if you cannot build a democracy, you are not interested in democracy. So you cannot build a working class or, or mass-based democracy if you're not interested in mass-based democracy. So these are some of the other values that we need to, to we are trying to consider and work up when we're trying to build up and understand the magnitude of the nature of the struggle that we must pursue towards the establishment of democracy. Again, comments, uh, 
it's a it's a CPS responsibility and it's clear as a, a chair to know these unions that by one by one. Comrade Chua, so that you can understand what is required in Sapao. Uh, here in Satnu, you will remember the 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 the, 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 the comrade you know, Shaba said in, when we invited them for our congress, he said. So we cannot attend because we are we are busy with trade unions. The CPS is involved. When when was when was when was making a uh, responding to our invitation, and you have also been following about uh, how some have been instigating other issues. Others, I'm a labour party, labour when I was There is that kind of in the nature of the fight, and it gives you one of a bit of a very strong sense of what's in. Our effect and our role and contribution is somehow irritating to other aspects of some of the in the trade union movement. Irritative. But at the same time, we consider that these workers on the other side says the CPS can salvage because they are seeing us in a war with some people whom they think they cannot change or they cannot influence power. Some have gone to be empires into the into that environment of the union. So when they look at the CPS, they see it in that way. But what you must make clear is that there is no way where the CPS can, we can confront people individually. But in our own way, we said it is not about, because if people enter into a space of ideology, it's about responsibility, it's a long-term thing for us to do it. And it's our life to, to deal with ideology and others. But when you start now to deal with some very trivial, there is no long term life and objective. Sometimes you look at it another way and say, yes, we cannot enter into the space they are trying to draw in of the, 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 the open space, the reckless conflict, conflict and confrontation. It's provocation. In, in one sense, it's provocation. But what is more deeply in the bag is the fight over the practical raising of the level of participation of the majority of workers in the trade union organization. And the, rule, the, the only way to do it is to undermine or to question or to interrogate the narrow interests of those who are liberals in thinking. But there is one scenario also that we need to, I am interested in is that it is clear that uh, any fight or any offensive against the CPS, there must be any ele an element of those people to claim communism in one way or another. There is this, that, the, that element, there is that perspiration to say, you can't confront, you can't reckless, you can't enter into that uh, 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 back with the CPS without seeking to take Marxism and put in there. Most of them are communists, they are, they are, they are as to say. When they, when they feel they are more and more overwhelmed by confusion, they will then start up to go through Marxism and then say something. What, what are they trying to do to say, we are contesting Marxism? And, and literally, that's what they're saying. The, the, the truth is that then, because the, 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 the conservatives are aware that they cannot win any battle with, with their own ideology, with Marxism. There's no battle you can win. They are, they, they are not there. Some of the liberals are waiting around to say, we can only be seen associated with the CPS if you want to maneuver our space in the trade union, but not to help the trade unions to grow, not to solve the problem of trade unions, but to get our space in the environment of the trade union for our own personal interest. But they have not made any swipe against the CPS, but they want to link with it and see the influence we have in the majority of the workers. But they want to align and link with the CPS. So I'm saying if we can be so callous, we will find ourselves in the bigger war with all of them, but the most important space, space now that we have is to recognize that 
there's a need for the CPS to enter into the grassroots with a simple purpose of mastering the processes of the trade union movement, in particular, the democratic life that the unions must live, how they must organize, and then how they can interact with workers among themselves, irrespective of ideology, irrespective of other orientation, including religious orientation, and other aspects of culture and so on. But what must be more important in them is that we see amongst ourselves comrades with the same mission. If today we don't need each other, tomorrow we need each other, because the working environment naturally demands or is involved in backlist and backlist after back. So in that course of life, the worker will say, if today, I don't mean to say, I'm not involved in the struggle because my other colleague is also in the waters tomorrow. When we victimization in the workplaces, some other web, you know, promotions, the working environment is so polluted and so diluted. Workers simply need these issues to be resolved, but the environment we are operating in, according to if you know what comrade shape, it's also vulnerable and so threatening. The last point, comment I wanted to, to, to share, he raised, he, he raised it briefly about the resources of money coming from our Side. The practical thing which we need to be very systematic on it and then see very accurate and assess it well. It appears that the arrogance developed by other trade union leaders, arrogance on the basis that they re the refuse, deliberate refusal to respect the membership, is because of the external fund that comes as money to support trade unions. When it comes, it then gives in them an upper hand to say, if this money comes and through my negotiations and through my influence, I am entitled, as long as the project survives, I'm entitled to be in this union to run this affairs, irrespective of what the workers are saying, because I'm already in charge of an instrument of survival. They see the survival of the trade union as only money or resources, not the workers. They have replaced the role of the worker with the role of the funding, so that trade unions can run without workers, without even doing any activity, as I've said. No trade union has any existence. Congress can be witnesses. If you don't strike, the workers are perishing. If the trade union, if the workers in the public sector didn't strike in the clinics during, during the COVID, definitely some, most of them would have died. Because they have to raise their own hands sometimes without the unions on their own to say, we are necessary, we are suffering in this environment. People are dying, the environment is not conducive. The regime was silent, everyone was silent. At some stages, some trade union leaders were even collaborating to say, shut down, shut up. The environment, the condition doesn't allow our action because we are in a convenient environment of frustration. So there is no way a trade union or a worker lives without the frustration of the workplace environment. And the work the, the trade unions doesn't see any hope. I born in shown of the work work, Japanese. I born in shown profit work, I born in shown of food is work. I born in show if we fight in shown of husband work, you don't see it even from Chile. The only solution to the problem you face in the workplace can only the only hope is with your fellow work. That's definite. So then let's see it even with us as communist party. They do not see us helping them to end the exploitation in the workplaces. They see us helping them against syndicates who have who are running the unions to make them to participate and take their role in the unions. So that's why the loud call over the communist party to participate in the unions is purely that demand. Then what is more critical to us, to us our entry point is very crucial. Our other point is permanent, must be followed through our principles and policies. Then the other issue comment of the comrades who have licensed themselves with CPS lifestyle. I think we've been dealing with some of the few cases somewhere, but you have seen how horrible they are. That when some when the members come up and say, we are homeless party members, they are saying they must justify their license to come and run unions and lead unions. 
No, unions are led by workers. There is no in any condition and element that a CPS can impose and let member its member to lead a union. That, that, that would be an error, and it can it, it, that error should be will be punished, will destroy us as the CPS will undermine the revolution, which we have already tried to re-gear and give it an effort and focus. So there should be no any element of such kind of a nature. No any caucus whatsoever. If a combat says the workers have identified me to lead them, we as communists must ask you and say, I, what are the terms? You know the conditions and the dynamics. The first dynamic we face is that the tenure movement is polluted. They will be clicking over others and they will create a condition of contestation of you with me. Only if there is that kind of a space where so we are afraid to fight on it, only if when we fight it, we will be able to organize and bring up better conditions. The other point was, are you aware company, that in that trade union where we are living, there are certain guidelines and policies that have been made that do not favor the operation of the trade unions. They have created a lot of, uh, 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 so to say, provisions for their own safety in the leadership. High claims, high increased salaries for individuals to serve them, and which are unsustainable. How are you going to attend them when they appoint you under the same framework if you have not created that condition to be addressed now before you take over position? So why can't you then, as a joint member who's interested not only in trade unions on the broader revolution, tell the workers to say, let's first correct this. Once you correct this problem, even you can leave the union. Because you must correct that big problem that has been created, that is now in the framework of the truths that have been created to serve interests of leadership beyond the workers, because they have claimed that once we are elected, we have also powers over those who elected you because of liberal politics. So all those are, are, are critical items that I think we need to make up. I agree with Congress when said, because this is the launch and we have attempted to enter it into the space because we saw it is as critical. Any program that the Communist Party would do must not be seen as suspicious to the workers. That's why we wanted to declare it very in the very beginning that the trade union, the CPS trade union program is first to enter into grassroots, but the purpose of doing our work is to do it in that fashion by making sure that we have the organization of unions in a democratic way. And the fight for democracy also requires that we are not compromising. Once we st as we start the fight, it is not compromising. There should be no way that democracy can be compromised. For what? For a disaster. You can, it's not a choice. You can't live without democratic life. That, that, is, that is probably the, the bottom line. So if there is no, there is any element of whatsoever difference from that doesn't represent the CPS. And if it happens, the CPS follows the mobile members party, you can have I don't understand that so that when they act, they act on the principles. But if anyone then associates the communist party and manipulate and abuse the communist party. A name. We cannot be chasing anyone. We cannot be chasing anyone. But party members must be on the roll, and they must be on register, and they must be active on principles. And they are all political in, in, in professional life, and wherever they work with these forces, whether in a student organization whatsoever, they must be responsive to the communist party. Because all those details of your services must be accountable to the communist party, and we must be accountable. So that in any case. Anything wrong happens in the mess up, you must be able to show that it so that you do not suffer because a suffer a suffering of one comrade who will be instigated for wrongdoings in any way outside, it is a big dent to the Communist Party because it will say we have offered the working class the worst of our own elements, which is not our design. Our design is we need to offer to the to the to working class organization our best. If we are still not our best, you must be workshopped in the Communist Party. But the, the last point coming is that we still admit who the learning institution the better to build democracy than the trade union organization. In your response, these are my statutes, the livelihood, who certain major account and journey. It is a source of the new democratic government that we build because the other teachings really relate with policies, they relate with how you do operations, they relate with organizations, and everything to details, including. Data and data management 
of anyone in any condition in that. How many people died, the union died, knows how many of its members died in a year. And then what are the causes of the is the responsibility of the union. To the, and what is the cost to the union and to the life of the society for that death? They can explain. They are involved in many patterns of that. They are in schemes. They are also involved in the investment projects. They, they understand almost most of the things that are there, as we explained. But the whole issue is, of course, accounting. The trade union is a school for all those purposes. Comrade Chu was speaking about auditing. The union now start, the, the, the worker now start to know about auditing. Some governments are failing to audit. Some people else serve the government. They are charged by auditing because they fail to think it's auditing. But they are involved in government processes. They are involved in, in governance in some way or another. But they have no understanding of democracy because it is not aspirations of those democracies or those governments to serve democracy. So ours is to just create that environment of democracy. So that, that is how I'm making my, my reflection on this. On this discussion. Uh, thank you, Comrade GS, uh, for those uh, reflections. Those who have joined us, comrades, we are in the workers' workshop and we are speaking more on work, workers' democracy. We're talking about demo democracy in the trade union movement, control of the trade union movement by its own members, but not for its sake for the democratization of the country. So the, the control of the union is not merely about the present, but it's also about the future of the revolution. So comrades may also make their contributions in that regard. Uh, and this, this discussion is very crucial, particularly minding the fact that uh, we are still on the celebration of our 10th anniversary as the Communist Party of Swaziland since April 9, 2011. And uh, for instance, the, particularly the question on uh, the anti-communism that has been planted by the regime over the years in Swaziland including in the trade union movement because it is an issue that has come up as well. We must recall that these 10 years of the part has not been smooth sailing. The party was attacked right from its birth by anti-communists and they still do so today. Many of these elements were defeated over the years, not by word of mouth only, not by talking only, but also by work on the ground, by work within the, the working class, in the communities, within the trade union movement. Sometimes it is not the workers themselves who are fighting against the communist party but it is some of the leaders who have become so comfortable in their positions. So comfortable that when the Communist Party came in and started organizing, particularly along the Marxist-Leninist tradition, including conscientizing workers based and grounding that conscientization on Marxism and Leninism. Some of those comfortable ones were always going to fight against the Communist Party. So that anti-communism is a one element that workers themselves will have to fight against. Because the Communist Party, Communist Party members may defend themselves but the best defense will come from the workers themselves. And there are elements everywhere proving that the workers are doing exactly that. But that does not come naturally. It has come through the active work of party cadres in the trade union movement, in working places. 
in order to get workers themselves to be owners of their own trade unions. And this would be crucial in terms of building for a new society. And when it comes to building a new society, we must remember that that task begins today. Garbage in, garbage out, as it has always been said. So if we don't have and we don't build democratic unions today, we cannot expect to have democratic unions in the future because we would not have done the job now. And the question of, uh, and of course, on this question, we would have also to learn from other countries, particularly if we can look at the example of Cuba. If we look, think about trade unions today and trade unions in socialism, because now the task of trade unions is to represent its me their members, but also to fight against the oppression. But in socialism, we must come together and defend the revolution, whilst we also resist imperialism. So the role of imperialism is crucial to understand as well in all these things, because imperialists, they want to see divided unions, and they want to see factionalism, which Comrade Tate has raised earlier. Those are the works of sort of imperialism together with the regime. And they only come out through the mouths of the elites, if I may call them like that, the conservative elites who, who have over the years taken unions and put them in their pockets for their own personal, often financial benefit. So those questions we must have, we must look into, not just now, but also in, as we continue with our discussion. And when it comes to also, also those questions of trade union interests, because members, it's not just their own funds in the subscriptions that they put in, that they must have democratic control over. The question of the pension fund as well is crucial. I know this is, these are very uncomfortable questions to engage on because they involve many people who have over the years become comfortable with the status quo. So much that workers are not, may not even be aware of their interests in, in the pension fund. Yet they ought to have also democratic control over those funds. And those are questions we need to be comfortable in being uncomfortable with. And we must engage on them. Thank you, Chair. I like the way we have summarized the issues. Uh, and uh, thanks for the input by the chairs as well. Uh, I, I, I'll uh, touch on the issues that you reflected on, Chair, and uh, what Comrade Titus and Kids would uh, say uh, in the uh, interventions. I'll start with this particular one because it was raised by you, the issue of the anti-communism within the labor movement. And you said it is propagated by the regime. Yes, I agree with you, but it is not only the regime alone. It is clear to all in Sandrin that there is a political party that is against members of the Communist Party of Swaziland. That is a fact, it cannot be disputed. It has caused confusion in almost everywhere, even in the labor movement. 
including to COSO as well. Now, Dorothy, Conway Titus raises the issue of factions in, uh, you know, personalities in the, in the, in the trade unions. Yes. Why is it there? It is because people are not following their own constitutions. We can differ in whatever way we differ, but the constitution guides every one of us in terms of moving forward. Nobody is going to come from anywhere to give us direction. It is our own constitution. Again, it is a responsibility for each and every member of the labor movement, regardless of party affiliation, to ensure that every other member is unionized. There should be no member that is not unionized. Your next door neighbor, you ask him, are you unionized or not? If yes, it's fine. If no, why not? Are there any issues? And I still insist, assist members, don't let them join unions before you can assist them. You are there to assist members. As I'm sitting, I'm sitting, I'm, 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 I've got so many cases that I'm dealing with coming from members who are trying to ask, they are not even members of unions, but we preach to say, join unions, but we'd assist you now. So that they realize not only the work of comrades, but they also realize the importance of joining union. And you also conscientize them. And as and when you assist them, you also teach them how things are done. Because it's not about you gaining mileage, but it is them benefiting from your, uh, their association with you and the organization. So the constitution defines everything, whether someone is like this and that, if the constitution allows that, just follow the constitution. Otherwise, we will have challenges if we are going to start peddling lies, deceit, and uh, you know, because I know that towards Congresses, that is when these things come in, these lies, deceit, and whatever. You know, I was uh, in another platform yesterday, and I was shocked what the other comrade was saying. Mm, can you prove that? Because if you're a leader, whatever you say, it must be supported by policy documents, law, or whatever. You, just, you can't just make your utterances from nowhere. Now, Comrade Casey spoke about the infiltration by the regime. Yes, there is infiltration by the regime. But there is also infiltration by the antagonists within ourselves, wherein the very same regime would even use those antagonists to fight against the cause of the working class. I'll make an example of myself. I've been reported to the anti-corruption unit. I've been reported to the police. There's been a press statement to say, I don't follow the constitution. I'm, like, I'm a constant delinquent. But who signed the statement? The very same organizations who are not following the constitution. So they will fail to fight with you in legal forum but opt to go to the press because there were arguments within the appropriate structures. The issue of workshops, yes, I've outlined what the law provides and what should be the contents of each and every constitution. And it's upon comrades here to say now, okay, fine, here are the gray areas. This is what you can pick. Analyze the constitutions of the unions, whether they do conform to what the legislation provides. And if they conform, do the members know about that? 
I can tell you that, you know, um, the constituency where Titus comes from, yesterday, there was one union that visited, visited that constituency. Regardless of whatever utterances, positions, uh, fluidity in terms of uh, uh, expressions and uh, finances, the members knew about their constitutions and their constitutional rights. And their views prevailed, right? Because they knew, they told the leadership off, despite the fact that they were being misled. There is need for political education. There is need for workshops, but the workshops require time, energy, commitment, and of course, some bit of funding. Uh, <clears throat> I know that you know, in most cases we volunteer, but some of us cannot sacrifice. Yesterday, I had to sacrifice to get someone to a meeting because that comrade could not even come to a meeting. So the, 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 the COVID-19 and the challenge that the country faces in terms of uh, provision of jobs and whatever, eh? comrades are penniless. You can assist until you have no food in the house, but let us volunteer, let us assist where possible. So every time, Every day we should uh, assist. The issue of booklets and newsletters, yes, those are things that would work, but they also cost money. We aren't like a consultant, we don't have money, we don't have money for this. The advantage that we have in this country is that the roads are good. We can hitchhike, the country is small, we have cell phones. Let us communicate. Let us send messages. As long as they are not defamatory in nature, let us communicate in whatever possible way we can do. Otherwise, we can actually just uh, get to a point where we can have an impact. Young workers in the process. You know, this particular one, it is true a structure was established. You also recall that there was this progressive movement within SNAT. I must say I'm so impressed with SNAT uh, leadership and the structures now, having changed the organization, transformed it overnight to what the trade union should, be, should look like. The young workers that were elected into the youth league, they were predominantly SNAT members. And the then leadership frustrated those comrades such that they did not want them to be part of the national leadership of SNAT, even at the branch level, and also serve at Kutukoso. So the comrades had to choose. You see how oppression can, 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 can uh, show its at the face at times. So they were frustrated, they had to resign, such that the youth in Tukoswa is no longer what it was, what it, what, it, what it was before, because of that challenge that, you know, some of the members had to resign now and they actually joined that uh, leadership. And of course, they are making so much impact, even if it's not the leadership now, because SNAT is actually running the federation now. Uh, in terms of ideas, in terms of finances, uh, which thing has never happened in the past. I must say, Comrade Chair, that constitutions of unions are binding. Even the courts cannot interpret them beyond what they provide. 
our chemical testing judgments to very effect. In fact, yesterday I was with the ITUC. I'm raising this because the Comrade has raised it. Uh, I wasn't there in the, you know, at the coastal level, we had, uh, we were supposed to have our Congress some in March last year. Now, this year, March is going past now, and again, we are, we are now in the, in the, is it May? It can't be like that. So I was telling them, no, you are wrong. You don't, have, you don't feature anywhere in the constitution of the federation. It is the federation that can only solve its problems using its constitution. We cannot entertain a situation whereby comrades will never be subs and then want to be part of the Congress, want to be part of the decision making process. They are the ones who call for respect of the constitution. So we must follow the constitution. Why the unions took us to court? They took us to court because we were not following the constitution. What happened in court? We settled for a consent order, meaning we agreed that we are not going to convene a general council that is unconstitutional, a congress that is unconstitutional. For us now is to comply with that. But instead, we took the matter to the ITUC. ITUC was shocked to learn that you know, the confusion that is there within the Federation does not warrant it to be there. It can be dealt with it in terms of the constitution. So basically, I'm trying to say that constitution bind. I don't care what say, who else was there and what, what, what was he or she saying, but constitution binds. And now we're waiting for the ITUC to say, this is what, uh, this is the position we're taking. Because it's a point, it's a, it's a point in time they're even saying, why don't you call all the unions and then decide there that, that you know we are not qualifying? They said, no, it, 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 they were there at some point in time. They refused to walk out. That's why the complex took us to court. Because as an OBs, they were of the view that we were no siding with the, these unpaying unions. So they had uh, my submissions, but they're still yet they're yet to 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 to, to, to give a final review. Comrade GS, yes, the comrade, the former GS of Swatnik uh, uh, did uh, accuse the CPS of interference. I happened to see that message as well, and uh, he also happened to request for an appointment with me through Comrade Viving Longwani, and uh, I said I'm ready to see him. Then. But then he did not meet with me, but instead he started sending me messages that were not uh, palatable and I won't go further into that. Otherwise, uh, I do confirm that there was that uh, on view that, you know, the problems that they are facing at uh, Swatin were somehow because of the SCPS, you know, having influence. Comrade Chair, if members accuse you of not following your constitution, don't, for, don't blame the communist party. Look at the constitution where we are breaching it and then correct it. Otherwise, we are going to be able to think of the system where in the past they would say, it's time you differ with, you know, in opinion with anyone. Ah, you put them on the law now. We put them on the No, 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 it doesn't work like that anymore now in trade unions. Eh? Look at the provision that they are raising. Comply, that's all. You cannot uh, be in office for a period of uh, five years, like, like the case with the Tukoso and our leadership. The restrictions have been relaxed. We must go for Congress. And it must be very, very soon. I don't know why, why, why we're delaying. That's, that's, that has been my position, uh, which I've sent to the NODs and uh, sent to, I've, I've, offered the, I've communicated with the ITUC as well. So that is all I can say. Otherwise, the court's view is that once your term of office is expired, you cannot take any lawful decisions. Go for Congress, have a new government, 
it is only the government that can have take those to lawful decisions. And I don't even know where these people, where, where people get this idea of, you know, once you, in fact, once you, 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 you have um, gone past, beyond your selling date, sell by date, you, you cannot even present any formal documents to a Congress. You go there for elections, and then the new leadership can then present documents, because whatever you present in that Congress, who would be declared not and void because you are you are not legally in office. You can't take decisions when you are not, you know. It has to be a legal government that must uh, take decisions. The issue of external funds in unions, yes, the funds are there, and the, the, the strings are attached. Of course, they are causing so much confusion. You know, in the past, um, unions, even in cooker parties, they were sacrificing. With the arrival of funds, for projects, it's, conf it's now confusing a lot of people because I think now there's a rush for that now instead of uh, you know being honest and sacrificing. And uh, I would not be surprised if the books are being cooked at some point in time because yes, the things that we see at times are quite worrying uh, in some organizations. I've covered the fact that you know the core system of office is expired will soon be going to Congress. And in fact, according to me, we've actually exceeded the date in which we were supposed to have this general council to prepare for Congress. And that's all. And we don't need much time. A week, a week would be enough because uh, we cannot do anything official now. We need a new government. Uh, on the issue of fair unity, yes, the CPS, like any other organization, is obligated to ensure that there is unity in organizations, there is unity in, in unions, there is unity in the federation, but there is no blind loyalty. People must stick to their constitutions. If an LC or Podemo or Sayoko teaches members what is right and wrong, in your constitution, don't feel offended. Correct that because they'll be raising that based on what is provided in law. If you're not uh, auditing your, 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 your books, do it. If you have not gone for Congress for eight years, go for Congress. That's all. Otherwise, I am also aware of a, a new union that has been formed by some members in the public sector, Comrade Chair, which is quite worrying. And uh, it is also, uh, last night I heard that um, someone is assisting those comrades in the name of the CPS. The constitution was drafted by the comrade. And now these comrades are causing havoc. We have tried to call them to order Comrade Chair, but I'm saying it is something that is, is worth knowing about that, you know, there is a comrade who assisted these comrades and in the name of uh, the Communist Party. And uh, we may discuss this in bilaterals to say, to, 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 to get into the details of the matter. But I'm reporting it now because um, it is very good to tarnish the name of the CPS. It is very good to tarnish the name of the NLC, the, the, the PUDEM, or whatever, uh, in these uh, uh, platforms, social media. And you, shortly you'll be seeing these things coming up there to say the CPS is forming this, is forming this, you know, because people are up to a particular agenda. But the long and short of the COVID change that, you know, I do accept whatever I propositions have been made here by comrades. And I believe uh, the unity of unions is in their members. The unity and strength of unions is in their members and members being conscientized of their rights, duties, and obligations and delivering the mandate that they've been assigned to do. Unions, in unions, for instance, 
you cannot take a decision to go on a strike without the, if there is no strike it is because the members have not mandated you to go on strike if there is no pass in the union the members did not mandate you to go to do and buy a pass so in the federation in the general council let us take decisions to say implement this so you can't implement as a federation as a leadership of the federation similarly when it's not in whatever whatever the unions there is democratic centralism it must be observed at all times i thank you chair thank you comrade quintin uh, i think by now it is clear that uh, for any comrade who wants to uh, who is geared up to work within the workers and mobilize workers, conscientize workers. They cannot do so without having and understanding the constitution. But okay. I think we've had a okay. very fruitful okay. discussion today. So and that is a crucial aspect that we have to emphasize again and again that communist party culture we cannot, that has been developed over the we years. We cannot. We are all aware workers. that this was not to a mere a good job. shop. If we talk do shop, not even have an idea, we'll just merely discuss for the sake of constitution states. These uh, discussions, of course, are going to that help again us goes in line, in, in line with knowing the law that is only at each point. In this These case, discussions are going to be the ones which, guiding uh, us uh, as we mobilize yes, workers. Did mention in the chat that, uh, uh, for instance, if the, now, the act was a qualitative, the, qualitative the, outcome the, of those the winter school months, which were of we of will be exact, doing exactly what own it as out their product. We set out to do but it. Did not come this by merely as a, we've said, for instance, we must have more of this regime. It was workers we cannot themselves in the next part of their lives. Again, come back and just that talk. Particular act. We must include in other light in the last along workshop. We said that this must along. happen. We said that we must have this more of these workshops, even at grassroots level. We must have them. We must account. The same way as we say um, union in the union life, there must be accountability. We must also account for our own work. We have said there must be conscientization programs of workers that we need to do. So all these things that we keep mentioning them, we must link with the uh, trade unions. We must create unity among unions. We must organize the unorganized. These are the things that we've been saying, we must defeat factionalism. So that in, in the next session, we are able to come and say, let us put the list up there at the top. Let us judge ourselves on what we have delivered on, on the list that we created for ourselves. Then we are able to take it forward. That is when we'll be able to know that this decade as the Communist Party has said, it's indeed a decade of liberation. Those will be the pointers which will show to us that it is a decade of liberation. We must be comfortable with these uncomfortable discussions we are having because we will not be free unless and until we are uncomfortable with our own situation that we are in today. So, I am going to invite both the, the GGS and the, and the Comrade Quentin to make their closing remarks. I think I'm going to just give three minutes to each of you, Comrade, to make your closing remarks. Thanks, Moderator. Uh, we had a very wonderful day, Comrade. I think that's a good end. And unfortunately, we have missed the our student comrades who I think it was important for them to learn much from this discussion. But as you have said that they are on record, they will be circulated. It's important they just have to have a session and go through them. We are aware why they might not be so available now. The extremely other stage, most of them are those who are who might be uncertain about their future since the incidents or the struggles of yesterday. And their struggle is literally they are part of our struggle and they must continue. Comrade Chair, one issue to add on is uh, 
I think that one on the party members who are being purged completely, who have been even removed from being members of unions. I think it's an issue that we must take up. But what we must also not forget there, not all of them are party members, but they have been also for raising critical issues that we like making them to be associated with CPS or when they are critical about certain developments in the unions, they were removed immediately from status in the trade unions and we must follow up those kind of things because then we can't progress when once they are victims. If they are victims for our own existence, for, for the work that we are doing, we need to protect them from various areas because, because that issue defeats the spirit of organizational building, the issue of unnecessary pressure. That's why we emphasize the pioneer at, at democracy because it also deal about persuasion and influence and then tolerance to each other and the like. So at its absence, it doesn't come. When the point of the, I think it's on our own side, on the point of the people who are using the CPS or who, I, I think this is what we've suffered, but we didn't ignore, we didn't took it very, very, much of a, we knew it would be a problem. That's why when we go for our last Congress, we then said, let's do now the membership system of the party completely so that every member of the party is a member of, in carrying a card member of the party. Because in the past, we were shopping everyone, every person actually were creating the space for the dominance of the ideology. So, so many people wanted even opportunities came in and inclined to the party. And then on the basis of the comment of the person who's writing constitutions of unions, because the CPS is not forming any union, there's been no decision to form any union. And at the same time, if there will be any area where we think we have to form a union, we can only inform to COSO to decide which union either can, 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 can be operating there or what union can be formed. So the CPS is not forming any union. We are part and parcel of building unions. If COSO says we are building this union here, we are doing, but we are on workplaces. If you find a workplace without a union, we raise it to, to cause that it. That this is an area where there are people who are working, they are not union, they have no union, they are not unionized. Which is the union that has got jurisdiction in that area? Then it is to cause that must give the, the line line. Then you connect these unions into that thing. And then it is to cause that was involved directly in the institutionalization of unions. Because the CPS doesn't register union, the CPS doesn't carry out any other process. And to Congress, this must be known. These are independent organizations. Even if they are working class organizations, we have got political responsibility on them, but they've got their independence of functioning operation. So that, that era is us as common who strictly to strictly abide to and say they are independent. We believe them, but they are independent. That's why when a communist party member who is not a work going to the work site to organize workers, you must first introduce yourself as a party member who is here to assist the workers to be organized into unions not necessarily to come up and be a founder of a union. We know all those crooks who come around and then come here due to unemployment, they find space, they start now to do a lot of shenanigans within, trade, within the trade union. But the trade union must not be a fortress. That's the rule of the Communist Party. We must start now to vanguard. It shouldn't be a fortress for criminals, for organized criminality. Go for the lesser protected with our own full view. So we treat the issue the situation there Special, I think it is important to see without over the person, but anyone who seek to build his or her own union, his business, and say is a union within the trade union movement element, it is our CPS first who must start to contest that, not before even to cause or does that. So I think we'll work, this one we have to work on. We will continue combat with the sessions. We will set up the program very well, how best we can coordinate through our commissar, through our comrades who are in the trade union, must find a space and then have a very strong caucus to unleash a program. It should be important that maybe every two months we have everyone's, every, every month we must have two sessions and you must see how to coordinate the sessions. But in the other aspects, we should also have the small group discussions, meetings that are taking place so that we can continue and fast track quickly the process of helping up the building of, of unions and running up the, the problem. So we need to, to get a bit more organized as CPS and time is on our side to get through that. And in the spirit comrade of uh, the, the, the theme and the topic, trade union as a school for democracy, 
will remain to us a protected terrain as CPS, and you must work towards it, ensuring that we fulfill that we produce. And as I've said earlier, on with us in our view as an trade union, we only see a trade union that is active through strike action. And the us also as CPS, Labanya, Ima trade unions, Bawabona, and Apila after some time, in Glambe Labanya, but this should be an instrument that must lead us to freedom. Nasesegune democracy in Swaziland, there will be certain people who will be still fighting unions to destroy them because they will think they are not necessary at some levels because they might assume other position. We are not like that. To the CPS, the trade union is permanent. And a socialism, this is a governing force. It's part and parcel of an institution that make legislation that participate in, in, in and that is what permanent space in the parliament, in the trade union, in the, in the, together with cooperative. Because all laws that are, they, they become all, all, all organizations that are industrial, that are economic, they are influential in the driving of the policies of the, of the organization. So for us, the trade union is a permanent. As long as there is a need for democracy, as long as society still has some conditions of a, as society has to live, there is a need for trade unions to play a major role in society. But the only thing that will happen is that we upgrade their role and responsibilities, not to only focus on the bread and butter issues, not to focus on the economic struggles, but to focus on broader issues related to society. So let us build this future with this diligence that it has, even under trying conditions. Thank you, comrades. Thank you, Comrade GS, uh, for those remarks. Well appreciated. Comrade Quintin, please come in. Thank you, Chair. And uh, I'll be very brief because GS has taken part of my time as well. Uh, Comrade Chair, you've been the best moderator I've ever come across. One of the best, of course. And uh, thank you very much for your direction of this uh, meeting. I also want to thank all the other party members who are here and uh, their different constituencies, of course, because not all of them are members of the Feminist Party. But uh, I have uh, really appreciated their being here and uh, their contributions for those make contributions. And I want to thank uh, uh, the members as well uh, for their active participation in the struggles in the time, not only the Tabani matter, but uh, all the other struggles that have been there. I think your comrades, we are fighting for a good cause and you must always support such comrades and participate as well. Uh, I must say where I am sitting, I am feeling the impact of the education that is imparted to the members, wherein members are now conscientized on their rights. And I also want to encourage members to continue with their good work uh, of a uh, you know, capacitating the members so that, you know, their dreams can be realized. Ultimately, what we want in this country is democratic reforms, but we cannot achieve that if we're not united, if we're not conscious, if we're not fighting for a common goal and setting aside all the differences that we may have. Otherwise, uh, one wants to continue to commit in pursuing the agenda of the working class in this country at all material times. I thank the chair. Goodbye.